You just made the list. Now, whatever your name is, get ready for the big surprise. I've got news for you. You are mine now. You belong to me. You're my number one customer. Yo, yo, what is up, everybody? It's Jez7780 here. What grinds my gears with episode 19. The Gaming Grindhouse. Again, welcome to Monday night. Shout out to all the grinders have come, that come in here. Pug Channel, Sam Ash, Dylan Rafferty, Garuda Legends. What's up, Garuda? Ryan Lands, Jamal King, Sinister V. Tony! Hey, Tony Mara! I hope that's not Tony that's drawing the hair on the uh, on Craig's face. What's up, man? How you doing? Jemiah, what's up? How you doing? Everybody, as you're coming in here to the Gaming Grindhouse, door is open and hit that like button. And I want to hit the sirens. Hit the sirens. Where are they? Yeah. Eight! Hundred subscribers. Thank you so much. Friggin' awesome. Cheers. Hit me with the horns, baby. Oh, it's wildin' now. Yo, yes. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I can't believe it, man. It's 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 an incredible. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it is it is awesome. I want to thank everybody again for the support. Hit that like button, yo. Let's get over 800 during this stream because this is going to be a wild one. And, you know, a couple of things. What's up, Axel? How you doing? Uh, Demasi, how you doing? Gadget, yo. Come on in. Share out the video. Waiting for frogs. And also, J-Dub says he will be by this evening. So thank you, Ryan. Thank you. So J-Dub said he will be by. I've been trying to fix the uh, the subscription things that pop up as you like you know hit the subscribe button live but um if you do subscribe while we're live please let me know in the chat and i will play you a soundbite and thanking you for subscribing to the channel so if that doesn't work don't worry just let me know and i will do the grinds board what's up nasim how you doing so yeah just to start in, in, into this and know what else i noticed too man the grinds board audio now is giving me some sort of copyright horse shit so uh i don't know i'll try it again i don't care i'll just replace the, the the music with it but i like my grinds board transitions so i might have to change the sound clip for that one but um yes yeah, so hit that like button as we start in here and we are going to yes and as you can see from the title of this Exclusives matter again, and Starfield. Oh my God, Bethesda. Oh yes, we will talk about that. that is going to be the hot topic. We're going to go through our grinds board stuff. But first, I just wanted, as everybody comes in here, I just wanted to kind of just go over what we've been playing. And if Frogs jumps on, we'll get what he's playing. But yeah, you know, he's a little late. But we will uh, move on from here, just like last week, uh, because I don't want to leave you guys waiting in the chat. Uh, 
So, and it's a busy night now. I know everybody's kind of rolling with their shows, so we got to get the grinders in here. Grindhouse is open. So, uh, yeah, so what I've been playing since last week, as you know, I've been playing Returnal. I've been playing, uh, and I've been playing, um, I've been doing the Returnal, and I've been doing the Hood. Uh, your Hood of Thieves and Outlaws. That, yeah, I've been enjoying those two games. I spoke about them last week. Uh, as for something new that I've been playing, I finally got my hands on the Resident Evil 8. As I told you last week, I downloaded it. I was able to play it, finally, um, and I'm probably about, I would say, four hours in, five? Um, yeah, about about yeah, about four hours in, I would say, about four hours in. Uh, so my impressions, first off, is the game, Resident Evil, looks awesome. Like, I think it looks incredible, atmospheric. Those are the best set of, uh, of ray-traced hands I've ever seen in that, so definitely, you know, uh, Resident Evil is really hitting uh, really well. Uh, and then the other thing, too, is that uh, the story is pretty cool. There's some shock factor in the beginning. And uh, I would say the one thing, though, I love 7. I really did like 7. And actually, you know what, guys? We'll just go right to the grinds because I actually had, I think I had this as a topic for the first grinds table, my, just my impressions of it. So I would just go, we're going to go right to the, we'll go right to the grinds table. Who wants to see this background? Let's go right to the grinds table. I'm just going to go right right to the uh, grinds board right here because I'm, I think that was my first topic that I even had on here. So with that, we're going to go right to the grinds table because, right to the grinds board checklist. That's what I mean. All hyped up. I'm ready to go right to the table because I have all that stuff on my mind I want to talk about. So, uh, we'll, let's do that. Let's go right to the, uh, the grinds board, actually. Let's, let's go right to the topics list. What's up, the Floyd? Yes. <laughs> Axel says four or five hours in. I'm almost done. You know what? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I've been seeing that it hasn't been such a a huge, um, basically, game, like, you know, to go through. And, and that's one of my things about it, man. You know, uh, one of the things about it is that uh, I feel like, first off, I'm rolling with too too many bullets and crafting is a little too easy like i'm playing i'm not playing on the hottest difficulty but i just feel like rolling with a lot of bullets i know the enemies take a lot more uh hits um the animations of them are really cool uh the the environments are absolutely insane yeah for resident evil 8 impressions uh you know we'll get some some gameplay up here but um yeah like i really think that the uh the atmosphere the environment the wolves the the zombies uh you know it really is uh i'm really you know i'm really digging the, the atmosphere of it um the one thing though i would have to say though is that i feel like it's a little too like it's i wouldn't say like too prettyish but it's definitely not as dreary as the um as the first one the first one definitely felt a little bit more of um a little bit more of uh you know uh was a texas chainsaw massacre type thing and this one's definitely more van helsing type of like your underworld things like that vampires werewolves this whole kind of uh you know victorian style design i would say you know, it, it definitely has its own creepiness to it and definitely has a scary moment. I haven't got to the infamous dollhouse moment, but I can tell you, though, the sound, the parts where they're, uh, you know, those wolves are coming at you and they're coming in there. Definitely vibes of Resident Evil 4, the beginning when they're trying to come in. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it definitely has that, that, that creepiness to it. Um, but, again, it's just definitely feels a little, like, too, not as, like, like, uh, as as scary of as the first one um yeah using their clip here for, for my stuff because i didn't capture my my uh my thing here yeah see this was like the first one the the, the seven the number seven so i i definitely uh you know the characters are definitely interesting you know the whole situation again you kind of it does have tropes to the other one like with the family and the and the home and you're know, running around the house and you know eventually she um you know the uh you know, the big witch that everybody's talking about, the big vampire one, is basically, uh, you know, she roams around just similar to, like, you know, how Seven was, where, 
basically she is um you know they're, they're roaming around and yet they're in that that lobby area and you got to get to the different rooms and you got to collect the the skulls and you got to put them on the the thing so the puzzles are pretty simple uh but again the lighting atmosphere so far i'm really enjoying it uh can't wait to play some more. Actually, running around the, the castle a little bit, I got a little nauseous, like motion sickness. I don't know if I have to fix the kind of sensitivity or something like that, but it did feel a little uh, not as uh, – it got me a little motion sick. I don't know what the hell that's all about. But, you know, definitely a cool, you know, really good game. Like, you know, I, I love the Resident Evils. I like where they're going with this. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm just feeling the same Resident Evil tropes that they have. So we'll see where it goes from here. Like I'm looking at the review, and there's definitely some, some, some other things that we're gonna see and stuff like that. I did watch the Before You Buy, and uh, you know things like that. So you know we will see where it goes. But I'm enjoying it. Only a few four hours in or so. I'm definitely enjoying Resident Evil Eight. Um, and you know, you know what else is interesting? And I don't know if you guys could, uh, could help me with this, but you know what I find is interesting is that. The multiplayer, did they say when that multiplayer is going to uh, be, work? You know, I don't know um, when that multiplayer is going to work because I'm trying to log into that multiplayer and it says that it's not ready. So I don't know what the hell's going on with that one. Uh, yeah, so that's just kind of strange how the um, that's that what's going on with that thing. But, um, you know, besides that, I definitely I got I said I said I got to the third biome and Returnal. Uh, that is just no, whew, there's no messing in that, that third bio, man. Those robots kick your ass. So, uh, I haven't seen the boss yet, so I'm wait. I can't, I almost was right there. I was right at the door right before the boss and I died and I got to go back to it, but it's just trying to get there is the challenge because I want to make sure I'm ready to go. But I'm loving Returnal still. It is one of those games that you just, you know, the, how fast it loads up and how fast you jump into it. It really just, you know, just, you pick up and you just go right into it. And it's it's just so awesome to just do a run. Um, so I'm really liking, you know, Returnal still. And, um, you know, the two-week mark is usually my thing. You know. Oh, I'm playing on the, the PS5. And, uh, you know, playing the PS5 with the uh, Returnal and with the Resident Evil 8. Uh, been playing that on there. But I heard, yeah, I heard Resident Evil 8 not super... Not super long, and I gotta tell you one thing: don't, don't let the speed runs fool you, because I can tell you right now, if you know, um, yeah, reverse, yes, Jamal, that's all speaking about reverse. What uh, I I try to click on it says the game's not ready. Did they say when it's gonna launch? But yeah, like the Floyd said, like you could run through Resident Evil, you know where everything is. Like you could just run through it. Like you, you can do, run through it. Like for the for the like second playthrough or something like that. You you kind of you could run through it. You know, like if if you know where the or the thing. It's just that one key. That's what I mean. Like there's there's not a lot. I, I feel like first off that you definitely there's much more ammo in Resident Evil Eight as opposed to Seven. There's definitely, um, you know, and maybe because of the. If you're familiar with seven, eight kind of you know follows similar tropes about it, like uh, the parts of the house and things like that, and 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 it's not as um, see, and I don't know. Again, I can't comment. Again, I am not the media where I review the game after two hours playing it and not or four hours playing it and not finishing it. So uh, you know, I hope this is not true. Yes, Arnold, it is true. Um, the thing is. Oh, end of the year gadget? R what? What's end of the year? R the reverse? Exactly, Jiggity. J Jiggery, same. Yeah, if you, if you could speed run through secure in 30 minutes, that doesn't make it a short game. Exactly. Like, just because you could run through the game doesn't necessarily mean that, it, you know, the game is short. The, the thing is, is that it's... It, like you get the key and then you can open up the doors and if you know where to go like and you could kind of do a speed run through it the second go around that kind of skip all the cut scenes and things like that but for atmospheric and drama you know i, I it's really good it's, it's very dramatic and uh the, the i gotta say the environments and and just walking around them is absolutely incredible um and um you know i hope it just it gets better from there to find out what's going on in the story, but, uh, you know, it's definitely a really interesting start to it that kind of pulls you in. You're like, what the hell's going on? And then it gives you the whole werewolf vampire vibe. 
And uh, my thing, and, and actually the way it started was pretty interesting because you start in the village, you know, in the village. And the village is kind of open. It's open where you, it's not a straight path. You could go to different buildings and things like that, which I thought was pretty cool um, because that was the one thing that I was nervous about. When this said village and all they kept showing was uh, the house, the the haunt, the, the, you know, the, um, the, how, the castle that you're in. Um, I was like, well, what, what is this village? Like, I would think that there's like a village, some outdoor areas and stuff. And, and there is, and there is a village where there's doors and stuff. And you could go around different buildings. And I liked how it started, but then now it took me to the castle and I'm kind of doing the Resident Evil tropes of unlocking parts of the castle on the third floor, going down to the basement, doing those, uh, going to the, um, the attached homes and the attached stuff to the castle, similar to like your typical Resident Evil. Uh, hopefully it does open up a little bit more. I see some from the reviews. You do get longer weapons, like you know, sh uh, you know, sniper rifles and things like that. So hopefully it opens up more. I, I thought when they first showed it, though, and this has always been my concern. You could even hear it on on this channel and where I've been else. It's always been like they call it village, but why? You know, I want to be in like an open. I thought this next level will be like a little open world ish, like not open world, but like open Resident Evil, open air fights and big big battles and things like that, rather than the kind of confined stuff. In the um, ho into the castle, so what well, it says, uh, speed runs give a good indication. I beat Dark Souls in two hours without dying. Oh, hey, I'm not into speed runs, so you know, I don't do speed runs. I just know that I could tell you from Resident Evil, like, if I knew where the stuff was, yeah, definitely, I could see, like, as I'm playing it, I could tell you, Dylan, that, uh, I would run through and be like, oh, yeah, like, if you put this on casual, oh, my God, you could just, like, walk through everybody, probably one hit kill them and stuff like that and just run that. But, um, you know, the same thing, like, Returnal, like, if you know how to be all the bosses, like, you could probably get that through it pretty quick if you just had one, two lives. But me, I'm dying, like, 25 times and, you know, and trying to, to, to look for stuff. So your, val your time and stuff may vary. Um, you know, I'm not a completionist or anything like that, but I can tell you that Resident Evil – Going through it, it's definitely giving me more of that linear. Again, I'm only about four hours into it, three, four hours into it, and you know, unlocked uh, some of the cats. I only got like two masks of the angels, so uh, we'll see where it goes from there. I'll let you know. Again, this is not a review. This is just my initial impressions. I finally got some time with it because uh, it's been busy as hell, you know, with everything else going on. So I finally got uh, some time with that one. But yeah, I recommend Resident Evil. If you don't want to get it at the full price, which is, you know, that's the new hot shit that everybody's talking about right now, then get it on a sale when it goes on sale. I was just asking about that re multiplayer shit. I was just saying when the hell that's going to happen. I don't know. I don't know when the hell that's going to happen, but you know, we will see. Now, the other topic I had on here was the, um, was the Returnal shit. So like Returnal, Possible future content. So there was a tweet, and I'm trying to find it, um, where the devs, House Mark here, where we are, House Mark kind of replied. Where is it? Let me just see. Well, there was some, where is it? Uh, I should have had it up. I was trying to find it. Um, uh, is it? I'm going to try to search for it. House Mark. Future content. I know what I think. I think it's in a job listing. I think that's where I f they found it. Um, Here it is. Is this... Uh, I'm trying to find where they had it. But I remember reading it. And basically, um, you know, they didn't have nothing to announce uh, right now. They do have challenges and stuff that they're adding. Uh, the, daily, the daily challenges. But they did have something where it was in a job post, I think. Where uh, I apologize for not having it up, but there's a job post, and, and really there wasn't a lot of news on it. Again, it was just some sort of insinuation that there's extra content possibly coming, and you know who knows what that is. If it's new guns, or if it's going to be biomes, or if it's going to be nothing, just patches. Who knows? But there was some 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 uh, some posting about that there might be uh, extra content to Returnal, and I could definitely see um, you know Returnal getting some sort of forward support because given the nature of how it's progression progressional like dungeon stuff they could add biomes and they could add more challenges and stuff like that you know and just kind of uh, you know interject those because it isn't online like it logs you in online and stuff and you do know when your other friends die and and you could find them and you could avenge them and all that other stuff so 
Um, hopefully there is a future. Now I did see, you know, with the sales wise, like Returnal did drop off from the UK sales charts pretty quickly from uh from the last week or so. So, uh, you know, and shout out Spider-Man Miles Morales shot back up again to the top. I think it outsold Ghost Shima and Last of Us. Spider-Man, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a freaking beast. Um, and that shot up. And then, uh, and also, too, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty interesting. You know, Returnal just doesn't have that. And I, and I think Returnal is one of those long burns where they'll drop it in price as they move forward and appease more, like, you know, appeal more and more to different um to different price points and then eventually it will go into the subscription but i think everybody will find out that you know th- if this game is for them or not i do think you know it being a, a new ip and things like that that basically you know returnal can be uh you know it can be a bit of a challenge especially the challenging part of it not just the price but the challenging part of it i could see some people you know kind of waiting on it and seeing if it drops in price and moving in. So I do think it's going to be one of those slow burn games that kind of works their way down. The waterfall, as I always mentioned, you, know, you start off with your hardcore and then you work your way down. You know, uh, you know, you were, oh my goodness. Andrew Wilkins said he had to break his returnal disc as too many issues and bad game design. Oh shit. You broke it. Well, you broke it over your knee, like cracked it in half. Jesus. I, I, see, I don't agree. The game design, like, I don't feel that, uh, the game design is is bad in Returnal. Like I think that I think they did one of the best ways of having a procedurally generated map and trying to and trying to uh, you know proceed with a story and keep it new and fresh while you're um, you know while you, you the gameplay the point the gun gameplay is incredible. So you know it just I don't think I don't think I think the game design actually was the was the was the cooler aspect of it. Oh, Mark, what's up? I didn't even see the chat. Where is it? Where's where, where my pop-up? Damn it. Where is it? Here it is. Shit, the whole big chat's over here. Yo, what's up, Merc? Where's Merc? Merc's, Merc's line. Oh, yes. What's up, Merc? How you doing, man? Uh, Yeah, but you know what? Andrew, there is definitely times where you're just like, you want to like go flip out right here, Uh, you know, with, with some of that stuff. But hey, it, it is a tough game. And, you know, sometimes... You're, you think you, you're going in, like, real strong. You're leveling up with Return On. You're ready to go. And then, basically, uh, you go into a room, and they hit you with some bullshit. And then, basically, you know, you, you, you're you weak, and you die. Or you don't have that gun level, and you're trying to get to the, the boss, and you get... Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things. Or you get some sort of mal- malignancies and stuff like that that really change the game. Like, you're like, I'm going to take this risk. And then you get it, and the malignancy doesn't let you pick up items. Or items give you damage. Oh my god, that's the worst. You know? But yeah, I think it I, I really think it's great. You know, I really I really enjoying it. It was a surprise. I if I'm gonna tell you honestly, honestly, I did not think that I was going to like the game as much as I did for Returnal. I did not think that I was really gonna go back to it that much. I thought I kinda knew what it was. Uh I had an idea from the previews and stuff, but I didn't think I was gonna be that hooked to playing that game um and this is the thing that i'm going to tell about you know just speaking about two different things resident evil 8 and returnal like back and forth in them right as i'm playing resident evil 8 it's a new environment it has some new new graphics like new things right but this is the thing i'm gonna tell you and going from returnal to this right it's still like I, as you heard when i was talking about my resident evil impressions i was talking about how I've seen like I've seen this before. We're in the house. I'm gonna get the key. The key's gonna go there. I'm gonna find faces. I'm gonna put them on the puzzles. These are the tropes of Resident Evil. And this is the thing where, you know, if you played the previous games, you have some awareness as to what you need to do. And sometimes, for me, again, this is for me, it takes you kind of out of it. You're like, okay, I see. I know what I gotta do here. I got. Look for the key. Okay, I got to, the key goes to this room. And then when I get into that room, oh, I got to put this wine bottle here and this thing here and look at this ring and take that thing off. Like, I kind of know what to, this is not all new. I'm not like, oh my God, this is amazing. It, I just kind of know the tropes. And this is then, you know, that's the charm of Resident Evil. But the thing is, is that when you're, when you, and also that was the difference between playing seven for the first time and, and the, 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 the difference as it going to eight. Whereas, you know, you're looking at seven and you're like, wow, seven. And then eight is just kind of like a redo, like a, a difference to seven. But you kind of did this already, you know, in the sense. Whereas Returnal, when you're playing that game, 
you're looking at that and you're like, what's behind the next door? Like, what's this? This is it's newer gameplay and newer experiences because it has you haven't really you've known rogue likes before, but not at this like kind of behind the shoulder type thing and this kind of environment and the way that it's being portrayed. And that's where like new and fresh is really cool. It's a good break because you know some of the tropes you have of the previous ones you don't get, and that's just my, you know, my my thing going on there with um, you know, with just the the, the comparison of going to something where I'm more familiar with, you know, the tropes. And I'm not saying the environment or the gameplay, but more of the the tropes of what I got to do. Whereas Returnal, I'm like, oh, you know, it it, it, hit, it catches you off guard because you haven't really done something like that before. Uh, somebody in the chat asked about Resident uh, about uh, Mass Effect. As you heard on Saltiest podcast, I was most likely going to get Mass Effect, but you know, after reading more about it and seeing the, the you know the, some of the reviews, but not necessarily the reviews, but basically the the visuals, and I'm just like, and eh. the thing is, is like. I want to kind of. I really don't want to play one. Like I want to go through uh, two again, but it just. I, I it doesn't. It looks better, but I just I don't know if it looks good enough, and I just don't know if uh, yeah I want to. Uh, you know I want to kind of go through that again, and uh, and I know it's a lot of game, a lot of DLC things like that, but I just don't know if I really want to uh, to do that. So I'm gonna hold off on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and uh, you know, however's like it's a great, you know, it's a great series. I beat all the Mass Effects. I think I, I didn't finish three. Actually, I beat all the other ones, but um, I do think that uh, you know, it's great. Two is the favorite, but I just I, I think it's a, I think you know, like, I'm gonna tell you right now. now. Whatever your name is, get ready for the big surprise. Yo, what's up, Godzilla? Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now. I think it's a lazy, a lazy up upgrade. Oh, that's nothing against Mass Effect, but I just think that EA kind of phoned this shit in. They looked at what mods were doing on the PC and just kind of like took that shit and just ran with it, and now charged sixty bucks for the friggin' Mass Effect. That's right. That's like guap. I think Mass Effect forty bucks. Yeah, like I think it's a great collection to have. Oh, Dominic puts some screenshots. Hold on, I'm gonna go. I'll go to the Discord. Uh, uh, GT, uh, where is it? Let me see. Where is it? Uh, what the hell is uh, thick clouds? Um, there it is. Wait, you posted it on the Army page? Oh, here you go. Cool. Dominic posted over here. All right, here, I'll show it. Yeah, this is Dominic's posts here from the thing. So you can see, like, this is his femship that he created. Uh, you know, and this is uh, Dominic. Is this one? Is this one that you're, you're showing from here? Yeah, like I, it's good. Like I think it, it's it's better than what it was, but it's just like I'm looking for like a demon. Like they should have pulled like a Demon Souls type redo, especially for the first one. Like they should have really kind of not just kind of fixed the lighting and some of the texture and stuff like that and up the resolution. Like they should have just done a full kind of Demon Souls like anniversary edition type treatment to it. Thanks, Dominic. But yeah, I think they should have done something like that for it i do think yeah see immortals I, like I, I i do think it's a little bit of a lazy port like i think it's an ea cash grab um uh, you know and and again like it does nothing it, it doesn't do nothing to the games because the story the games the dialogue i think has yet to be proven better uh by any kind of rpgs like i do think that you know mass effect did the trilogy when everybody was trying to do the trilogy mass effect did do it the right way carrying over your character the story the action it definitely became more of a shooter as you got on there but I just feel like EA should have it should have done more, especially with the first one. Like either make the first one basically, um, you know, like a Demon Souls or a remake or something along those lines. But they just kind of just you know, changed the gameplay a little bit, and that was about it. So eh, eh. So I won't wait. 
<laughs> wait on that one because I just did, I, I think it's a great collection and some of the DLCs I never played before. So yeah, you know, I, I definitely want to you know to to do that um, for that one. So for the next topic I got here is this the PlayStation Five this patent. That came out, and uh, yeah, shout out to Salty. Salty covered this on his channel. If you want to go hear more about it, but this patent kind of rolled out, and I thought just to include it on here because you know uh, I know one of the big things is like Sony needs to have the same X Cloud and all this other horse shit. And you know, the thing is, it's basically the hell just fought. I think that just dropped my phone. Uh, you know, Sony basically does have the cloud shit. They even partner with Microsoft with some of their Azure crap. Um, but again, like the thing is, is that. I said this before, and I'll say it again. If Sony and Nintendo ever decide to turn on this shit, this cloud, 5G network streaming, things like that, um, if, if they ever decide to do it, it, it beats Game Pass. Why? Oh, my God. What, what do you mean sacrilege be, beats Game Pass? What are you talking about? It's because Sony and Nintendo have the content. And I always make this connection. Just look at Disney. Disney didn't start the same time Netflix did. But look how Disney just surpassed 100 million subscribers. Why? The content. They brought new, fresh content. But also, they spent those years making those big movies of Marvel and really establishing themselves and then put all those movies in a streaming service. They spent the years building the IP, getting the respect, getting the attention. And then all of a sudden, they flipped the switch and said, now we're going to do streaming too. Boom, it blows up in, in, in record times. When Netflix is still, you know, still trying to linger on. You know, Netflix has been decade, you know, years doing this stuff. And, you know, they're like, finally, you know, we're, we're where we want to be. Like, and, and then Disney just comes by and just does it because Disney has the IP. That's why when everybody's like, Nintendo and Sony got to do this streaming stuff or this networking or cloud shit. Be careful what you ask for, because if they and, and Microsoft has a history of doing something first, and then somebody coming along and doing something better, and just basically just take kicking Microsoft out of the out of the game completely. So, you know, Sony has their patent right here where they're going to have a cloud gaming system, streaming server, and then the network here, and then they're going to have, uh, you know, here's your base station here, and you'll have your edge computing resource, cloud gaming proxy, buffer logic, client app so it just shows that sony's still like you know even though streaming is really not there i don't recommend it for anybody you know um just showing that sony is doing the same thing with cloud data centers streaming video generated executing cloud gaming proxies edge compute proxy all this shit they're doing the same kind of cloud stuff um that's already available right now to this day and again there's is is google and and stadia and and, and Luna and, and all that stuff moving any needles? No. It's a nice to have. I said it's a parlor trick. It's the, the guy at the bar trying to impress the girls. Look what I could do with my phone. But interesting that Sony is having a patent for it with 5G cloud gaming. And, uh, you know, what was the description of it? Did they give a better description? Uh, and kind of the big thing is that they, they talked about implications over cloud gaming with 5G network communications. So obviously, as you know, Sony really doesn't have a mobile answer to to streaming so maybe this is the start of having playstation now stream to mobile phones they did have it to their xperia phones but not to all phones so maybe that's what this is hooray can we i really care less you know i'm not gonna be playing on a five inch goddamn phone and uh you know i think i think it's a lot of work and a lot of effort for a future that i don't think these guys even know what the demand is for something like this. And I think that's a, you know, I think that's a problem. Like I do think that both Microsoft, Google, Amazon, uh, you know, and even Sony to this respect, like this stuff, like I just don't think they even know what the demand is. They just see mobile market and they just think like, oh, we got to get our games there. I don't even think they know if there's a huge demand for their games over there. So I don't understand. I, I just didn't think that, um, you know, that it really is something that's going to take the world by storm. I think it's going to find a niche. Hey, what's up, J-Cat? Yes. Hit that like button, everybody. Um, I think it's going to take the world. I don't think it's going to take the world by storm. I do think it's going to be an alternative way. Some people might play it. I would uh, put it akin to a, a lesser version of VR. Like, it'll just find its group of cloud streaming. And I Because I just don't think a mobile gamer, if that's where they're trying to take this streaming stuff to mobile, I just don't think that those people want to play different stuff. 
They don't want to play tri big, big AAA games that you want to play on a big T70 inch OLED on a phone. Uh, you know, maybe there's some arcade games. Like, I always thought there was a place for maybe arcade games, like Xbox Live Arcade or something like that. Games that you could kind of, that when you're sitting in front of your big TV, you want to play your big games. But like some of those mobile games, like Zuma and things like that, like, oh yeah, you know what? I like to take that on the go. So make Xbox Live Arcade games on the go so I could play them, get achievements offline, and then I'll come back. I always thought that was a cool aspect of it. But the whole saying, I'm going to play Gears on my 5-inch phone with a, with a controller or a touchscreen, no. No. <laughs> Mog says, if you can pick up a girl at the bar showing a cloud gaming, you might be Henry Cavill. Yeah, it, it, Kim Cavill. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That that's what that that uh that stuff is. Like I really yeah, it's a it's a it's a cool Paula trick. Um the other thing, and I, again I don't recall if I did this already, uh if it happened after my show. Um but the the dual sense released the two new controllers colors. Um here we are right here. So I don't know if you pre-order them. One crappy thing about it, though, is that the, the red is actually $5 more than the friggin' black one. Uh, but, yeah, I had a gift card, so I did uh, pre-order the red for my son for his birthday. He wants, a, he wants a red controller, so I will get him that. But uh, the red is definitely really cool. I'll tell you, the one cool thing I do like with the colors is that they kept the buttons the color of the, of the controller. They didn't make the buttons black. Um, needed the, the D-pad, so that's pretty cool that they left the buttons the color of the controller. Uh, but the red definitely looks cool, and the black looks awesome, especially if you get the black and you go get the um, you know, the the black side panels from that third party company for like fifty bucks. I think you can order them now and you'll get them next month. Uh, they were on back order for the last few months. Uh, get that with your black matte PlayStation with the black controller. Oh man, that will look good with the lights on them. Yeah. But yeah, two new color controls are really cool. I'm still waiting for those panels, though. I do think they should have the panels coming out with these things, too. That would have been pretty cool, you know, with the panels for that one. But um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. Yo, what's up, TTR2? What's up? So now, the next I'm going right down this freaking grinds boy, man. I don't know if Frog will be sleeping. He's going to come on last late again like he did last night. He came on. He scared the hell out of me. And now, where the hell am I? Th there we go. Yes. Oh, speaking of, yeah, I forgot. I spoke about Mass Effect Legend, the legendary. Better on Booster. It was on Booster. So, like, basically, Mass Effect Legend, there's no next gen version of the game, right? Uh, I don't think it's better on Booster. I just think it's better on the Xbox. Um, Mass Effect Legend actually is running in backwards compatibility mode. And on the X, there's only a PlayStation 4 Pro version and there's an Xbox One X version or whatever like that. But because of the whole way Xbox does their, um, their backwards compatibility, the game could see the extra power of the PlayStation, of the, of the, uh, of the Xbox Series X. It doesn't have to be an Xbox Series X game. Which, you know, it, it, and I saw something last week about like how... On the disc, somebody confirmed that they're giving you the Xbox X version or the Xbox One version of the game. But when you put it on a Series X, basically then it downloads the Series X version, like the updates to it and stuff like that. But they're on the disc, it's basically the Xbox One game, but then you get the digital kind of upgrade once it's sent. That's smart delivery for you right there. Uh, whereas the PlayStation 5 has to be a PlayStation 5 game, like packaged as a PlayStation 5 game, which comes with specific features like the adaptive triggers, the 3D audio, and the uh, immersive uh, you know, control stuff. Those are kind of things that are akin to a PlayStation 5 game specifically. Mass Effect doesn't do that. So Mass Effect runs in backwards compatibility mode, but it's just boosted on the Xbox. So there is modes like it has better frame rates, stable frame rates. It also has 120 frames per second mode on it where the PlayStation 5 does not because there is a PlayStation 4 Pro doesn't support the 129 120 frames. Only the PlayStation 5 does. Whether they patch it in later or not, 
It's just one of those cases where it is actually a backwards compatibility running in boosted mode. It's like they call it a backwards compatibility plus or something like that. And if you recall, another game did that EA was Need for Speed. Uh, Need for Speed, uh, the remake, a takedown or not takedown, uh, the Hot Pursuit. Hot Pursuit, the remake they did to that one. Whereas there were extra modes to it. And if you remember, the X, for some reason, the Xbox version had some, some frame rate stutters in some of the curves there and one of the maps. But basically, it's running in a, in a, a PS4 Pro, uh, you know, boosted backwards compatibility plus, they call it. Bullshit. Yeah, they're coming up with all this bullshit. What's up, Ghostface? You know, backwards compatibility plus, they call it. So, Mass Effect Legend, it's on booster. And it's backwards compatibility plus mode. So anytime you think about backwards, anytime you want to go backwards, think about Xbox. That's everything backwards works better. You know, forward, you're in trouble. Backwards, you're good. Hit that like button, everybody, because we're getting into the nitty gritty now. Who is your daddy? So, oh man, oh man. We're good. <laughs> Dude. If you weren't on the Twitters, the IGN shakedown. Oh my God. Twitter was a wildin'. It was a wildin', man. It was a crazy ass place. Because one of the IGN dudes, what was his name? He got, he got. Ripped through the mud because he made a comment. I believe his comment was 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 foolish. His comment really was it was silly in the fact you know it was his opinion, so it is what it was. But I do think that you know it was definitely a loaded opinion. Uh, you know something where I do think that uh, where is he? I'm gonna go find him. I had his thing up here and then I lost it. I'll give you my perspective on it, but I gotta tell you, his opinion came out, man. Woo! People went into his, they 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 researched the hell out of this guy. Where is he? I think he put a shrimp. Oh, because all the IGN stuff now with that other stuff. Oh my god, wait. Um. Oh, what's his name? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, Era Justin. Oh, my God. So, Era Justin. Oh, Justin Davis. I think that was his name. Yeah, here he is. So, he did this this uh, this statement. <laughs> Opinion. <laughs> Opinion, per se. But, man, he basically said... Well, this is what the, he did say. And let me know you could say it. So, uh, since the next, the, since the launch, this is the famous tweet. You can see where all the likes. And then, Jesus, the, the, the follow up. Since the launch of the next gen, I've done a complete 180. And at this point, I would really recommend, uh, I really, I wouldn't recommend a PS5 to people, not until it has more games. Get an Xbox Series X and sign up for Game Pass. And then he wrote, and this is the thing where I got him on. I play on Xbox every night. I haven't turned on my PS5 in two months. Returnal looks great, but it's seventy dollars. There we go with the price shit. Uh, Game Pass is just too good to ignore. Game Pass cap. PS5's library will get there someday. <laughs> it will be expensive. Well, oh man, oh man. He, he those them fighting words apparently because people went into his uh, Xbox Live uh, codes and basically. His uh, his gamer tag and saw that he hasn't played an Xbox game in two weeks. Nonetheless, it was Yakuza, and he went he went private. So he privatized it, his uh, his thing. Then what I thought was really interesting that nobody really never followed up on was his statement here. This was I thought was pretty interesting. Here was that he said, um, I thought this was interesting. What he's like. Where did he say this? He, he tweeted out. He goes back. He goes, 
get ready because they're going. I'm going to throw everybody for a loop when they tell them how much I really am enjoying Ratchet and Clank. And uh, where is it? If you heard it there, which I'm just like, you just said you wouldn't recommend a PlayStation to somebody until it gets some games, but you're having such a great time with their games. Like how? I just don't understand. I, I, the logic here was really strange, um, you know, with it. But, hey, man, I think the problem was talking about no games and doing that stuff. That did trigger a lot of people. And people went at him and caught him in the lie of, you know, this whole over-exaggeration that he's loving Game Pass, rubbing his nipples, and that, uh, you know, oh, here it is. Man, you're really going to be confused when I tweet about how much I'm enjoying Ratchet & Clank next month. The last console I owned was a Sega Saturn. Because people are like, well, why did you do this, you know, spooky that he both, the, both of these two IGN guys posted about like, a Game Pass thing. Zach Ryan didn't do it as, like, he didn't, like, say, like, I don't recommend the PlayStation 5. He just said, I like, Game Pass. But, um, you know, but this is just weird. It's like, if you're enjoying those that game, like, why would you, like, why would you just say, I'm not recommending it? It's just really strange. Again, coming from media, again, you know, it's supposed to be whatever they are, media bias, whatever the hell you're talking about. But I just say, like, the thing is, is that, oh, what's up, Wally? How you doing? You know, this, this is my thing. And I tell you it all the time. Hit that like button, right? If Game Pass was so incredible... You wouldn't have, it wouldn't need this extra effort of promotion. It's like having a lemonade stand and just going around and just yelling, like, you got to try my lemonade. You got to try, like, the lemonade is really the best. And it's just like, dude, if you have great lemonade, the people will come. The word of mouth will just naturally happen. Like, you don't need promotion is one thing, but you don't need this extra cap effort to talk about Game Pass. And know what I think is so interesting about Game Pass is that people hype up the service. They're not talking about all these games that they're like the game that they're playing, and then somebody's like, "Yo, man, that's awesome! That game. Where'd you playing that?" Oh, yeah, I got it in Game Pass. Oh, really? No, it doesn't go that way majority of the time. Instead, it goes, Game Pass is awesome. What are you playing? Everything. Um, Why are you... Like, I'm going to go around, grinders. I, I think I'm going to go around, and I'm going to be grinding Redbox. I'm going to hype the shit out of Redbox. I'm going to be like, I come up to this box... All these choices just for $5. I don't know what to play. Oh, I'm standing here at this red box. But I don't know, man. Red box is awesome. Hype up that red box. Shit, I might even hype up Gamefly. Gamefly is, oh my, oh, I go to that website. I don't know what to play. So many choices. Gamefly is awesome. You're hyping up the service, the delivery service. I don't understand the hype for the service and not for the content in that service. Eight hundred subs. Thank you again. Yes, we hit that right before the show. Thank you again. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. We get over over eight hundred. But thank you again. It's been awesome. And that's it, Ryan. That's another thing. Like, if you're going to be hyping up the service of Game Pass, how do you not incorporate the differences with what PlayStation Now Now offers and what PlayStation Plus is offering at the time? Because if you sit here and tell me, I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, uh, I'm just going to let him know. Oh, there we go. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna do this right, like here we go. 
like if you're going to talk about services, right, and delivery and games and stuff, how do you say Game Pass is incredible? Oh, Game Pass. Oh, Game Pass. Give me the jacket. Rub my nipples. And ignore this. Not just completely ignore it. Oh, I haven't turned on my PlayStation in months. Dude, this is all PlayStation 5 stuff. Since this, and I'm going to tell you something. This is not $15 a month. Here's $60 or $44 if you get them on sale, $44 on sale. This is about, just about 100 bucks for a year. $110 for a year, if you, or $80 if you get them on sale for $45 on Amazon for a year. Look at what they're offering. They're giving you PlayStation 5 games. PlayStation 5 game. PlayStation uh, 5 game over here. PlayStation 5 game. New day and date. Holy shit. What? Day and date. Uh, a soul storm. Day and date. Wreckfest. A, a month early. It's a $10 upgrade for all you peasants out there who don't want to pay an extra $10 for, for a, a, a AAA game. You're getting Wreckfest, the PlayStation 5 edition, a month early before everybody else. So wait, we even have we have PlayStation Plus exclusives. A month early. The PlayStation 5, like look at like, you look at this just this part. Then in addition to 800 games, look at what they're offering in PlayStation now. Call of Duty. Is there a Call of Duty in Game Pass? No. Avengers, are they in Game Pass? No. Borderlands 3, I think that's in Game Pass. But like, you, you Battlegrounds, is that in Game Pass? I don't know. I don't think so. But the thing is, is that how can you ignore this? There's similar benefits here. Games day and date. Destruction All Stars day and date. Day and date. A month early. Exclusives, days gone. Is 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 uh exclusives in there? Control. You got that. That was a that was a big game. That was the PlayStation Five version of it. And he got Final Fantasy. Like, okay, ignore this. But notice what I'm speaking about. I'm not like hiding this and going, "Oh, dude, you just got to sign up for PlayStation Plus. You got to sign up for PlayStation Now. It's awesome. It's the best value ever. You got to do it. You got to do it." You got to sign up for it. Trust me. My friend over here, tell him, hey, man, you got to try this. You got to sign up for PlayStation Plus. You got it, man. You got it. It's awesome. There's so many games in there. I don't know what to play yet. And they keep adding more games. And then, they, and then they're exclusives. And then they, their first party game is going to be in there day and date. Awesome, man. Awesome. Just sign up for PlayStation Plus. Like, no. I'm showing the games that are in the services. Go back to my Disney analogy. WandaVision came out. Dude, was everybody running around the internet going, Disney Plus, Disney Plus, Disney Plus? No, they're like, WandaVision, you got to check it out. You got to watch it. Really, where do I find WandaVision? Where? Sign up for the. Oh, see how it, the narrative is the content drives the attention, the reason to watch. Then you subscribe. Loki, you gotta watch. Oh yeah, I'm watching. I'm watching Captain America and Falcon. Oh man. Oh man. Like nobody's just running around going, "You gotta sign for Disney because you like Mickey Mouse." Like just sign up for Disney. Just sign up for Disney. Just because it's Disney. It's Disney. Sign up for it's the content. And these people, are like, I love Game Pass. Well, all the games. Okay. I'm not saying that the, the people don't do that at all, but it's just very interesting that that so much effort is given just in. The fact of the service. You're promoting a service. Like if I ran around and hyped up fucking Redbox. And I hyped up and I hyped up that shit. That's the problem here. The problem here is you're hyping up a delivery mechanism. A rental service. A trying out service. You're not hyping up the content. Because guess what? The content has yet to come. Huh. That's worth a goddamn. Who joined the grindhouse? Is this who's this? The one and only. Jay Yo, Dubs. what's up, J Dubs? How you doing, man? How are you doing? Doing, doing good, man. Doing good. Can't oh. complain. Can't complain. Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm just going on the grinds board. We're just going down the lines. But yeah, tell everybody what you've been playing, man. What you've been playing? 
Uh, I have been playing Resident Evil 8. Um, I've been grinding out in the Returnal. Uh, mm -mm. So far, that's my game of the year, yeah. as well as a ton of other people. Um, I'm just prepping, getting ready for this Ratchet and Clank. Uh, another game of the year banger. Dude, that was incredible. Uh, that's going on. So, uh, you know, getting ready for E3. You know, mm -hmm. that's in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I can't believe uh, it. It's coming up. It's yeah, it's June already, man. Can you Can you believe it? I, I, you know what? I can't. I can't believe it. I can't believe that Microsoft got away without talking about Halo until E3 again. Incredible. Well, <laughs> listen. Rumors are now. Rumors are that that game, as well as uh, was it? Uh, what's the name of that game? Uh, everybody's going gaga over uh, the one that uh, nobody Starfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something that's in space. Starfield, some game that's yeah. supposedly in A space. Porno in space. Uh, there yeah. you go. Uh, there yeah, you no, go. Starfield. Was it the same that delay? No, Halo. You think? You get, I know that they just yeah. announced that. I have that about Starfield. They're thinking about it, but yeah, yeah. It's Star Starfield. Um, according to a ton of other people, it's getting delayed. Well, um, just marketed out. Halo. Out next year. We'll yeah, because uh, they never so, even uh, announced the goddamn game again. We don't know. Yeah, we'll talk about I mean, it. You know, trust me. That's my yeah, next yeah. topic on yeah. here. Actually, my next topic was, and I actually got taken down. Speaking of Starfield, uh, Dustin Legiri really did have a picture of Philip Spencer on his uh, next to his wedding photo. Um, oh. That was true. Like it, it was not. I thought it was uh, um, Photoshop. Photoshop, but actually it was, and he actually has a video of him taking it down and putting Starfield up there. So uh, yeah, it really is a picture of Phil Spencer. So I. I tell you, man, I, it's just weird. He thinks it's funny. I think it's freaking weird. I, I don't think it's weird, and I'm <laughs> going to tell you why, Jeff. There's, there's what about forty million other people in that fan base uh, that has field pictures on the on the mantle. So I, I don't find anything out <laughs> of the, the ordinary. candles. With the candles, yeah. dude. <laughs> the ones with the candles, you know. Holy the, the, shit. You know, when, when you're taking a nice, a nice warm bath, you know, you got that, picture of field and candles. Dude, that you know? film that could put you, that could put you to yeah. sleep. He's like, right? he's like, they put on the friggin' uh, the sleep music, and Phil Phil Spencer's like, they're coming. Those games yeah. are coming. He's in your left ear. He's like, those games are coming right now. Oh, right, right, I'm happy right next. To, I didn't show you. Yeah. Right next to the game pass passes, <laughs> the one dollar passes. He's like, dude, it's like, it's like uh, one of those. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'll tell you right now. He goes, you got and he's going back to the left and right. Yeah, he goes, Game Pass, it's only a dollar. I tell you, it's only a dollar this month. I said, Sign for Game Pass. This is, for, uh, yeah, he does like the Phil Ness in each of years, like the ASMR shit. Yeah, it's like, oh man, this guy puts me to sleep, dude. I just, I don't. The thing is, is that hey, he's a nice guy, I'm sure, but he has been running Xbox and and bullshit through the mud for the last goddamn five, eight years. He has done shit, okay. I don't understand why people. Like, he's just a nice con man, and I just don't understand how you had games. And this, Jada, this is the thing that drives me crazy, is that before 2017, mm -hmm. they were bringing out games. It just stopped. Absolutely. Absolutely. After, after Halo, and, and they shut down the studios and shut it scalebound. It's been dire. Like, it's been Sea of Thieves not hitting. It's it, Gears 5 was is what it is. But they lost the gusto that they had early in the generation. They had all those games. Sunset, Forza. He got the Tomb Raider deal. He had Titanfall. All this mm, stuff. Mm, mm. How do you mm. go from that and then the halfway gen through the generation, you just stop making games? And then tell people, they're, and then people who are hyping up this bullshit now are telling you, like, well, they're just lining up the deck for next gen. We're in next gen. Yep. And now you're saying, well, they're not going to be ready for 20, to 2023 really be a bang a year. What happened to waiting for next gen? We're in it. And then how can you even put the words PlayStation in your mouth at the same time as Xbox when PlayStation has done nothing but deliver not only at the end of their generation. People forget they went from Last of Us to Ghost to Ghost fucking multiplayer Right yep. into Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is outselling both of them. Yep. Give me friggin' Returnal. Now Ratchet. And then you still, oh, yeah, and God of War and, 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 uh, and you know, and even Kenna. And, oh, yeah, and also uh, Horizon, too. Like, how yep. can you even compare the two of them? I don't get it at all. 
Well, God, guys are trying. They're saying, well, you know what? We got Game Pass. Nah, dude. We got three. <laughs> 300 games from previous generations, so that counts for something, you know? Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't understand. And like I was saying, the logic before of just, like, Game Pass and what it is, it is a service that has yet to really prove its value in the reason why it became a, a talking point to begin with. The whole point of Game Pass becoming a talking point was Microsoft's first-party content launching day and date. Prior to yep. that, Game Pass was just a 360 and old-ass games. So it wasn't until Microsoft announced that all their games, starting with Sea of Thieves, goes into Game Pass day and date, was when Game Pass even got anybody looking at it. And yet, what have they done, really? We're still waiting for those games. You know, they've done Gears. That's probably the biggest one they put in Game Pass. And you see what Gears Mm -hmm. turned into, a microtransaction fiasco. And they're basically closing shop now and talking about the next generation of Unreal Engine. And really... Dude, like, what are they going to go for that? Like, like, you know, they basically signed off. That was the purpose of that tweet, which I thought was really strange. You know, like, yeah. we're moving on to Unreal 5. So we'll have Operation 7 and 8. And then well, it's going to be some time before you hear from us again. Toodaloo. <laughs> it's like, Jess, when dude. have you ever heard Sony talk about, hey, you know, we're moving from one engine to the next? Like, they don't care. We care no. about the games. Exactly. And that's the problem. They care about all the other fluff. To make people, you know, it's kind of like you point your fingers and you yell, and you yell, "Hey, look at look at that flying dragon!" And someone turns and looks why they run away. You know, it's that whole, it's the whole deflection thing. That's what it, it is. is. It's it just is. one big deflection. And it's amazing how people don't see through that stuff and see that this is deflection because they got to. No. I'm yeah. Go ahead. They see no. it. They see it. They, they listen. Do. They see it. They're not. They're not as you know as gullible as you think. It's they see it. They just again. They don't have, have anything else. Yeah. They don't have anything else, and it's going to be quite some time before this stuff comes. Uh, we already saw they say that, hey, they haven't started on Gear 6. Forza, uh, uh, eight, Forza Motorsport 8 is in, in like, ah. early production. So that game isn't coming out for another three to four years. And, I mean, hell, they just got a, um, a developer on that one game. Uh, on like was it with the Hellblade or some other game that Hellblade they just got? Uh, That's another game. Yeah, twenty nineteen it was shown. Yeah, yeah. Twenty nineteen. And a lot of these jazz, they hope and pray, and they, these guys keep saying, you know, it's next year, next year, next year. Just wait. But then next year turns into more just nothingness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's no. a problem. You're hyping up this year, and this year basically is last year. Like last year, these games, Psychonauts too. Halo, all those games were supposed to come out. This is the thing that I, I talked about last week, was that how do you have... Halo was supposed to be in our hands in November. How do you have that as even a highlight on E3? What were you going to have for E3 if it wasn't for Halo? Like, you should have had everything lined up for Halo prior to E3 if you had so much to show. But instead, they held Halo, again, close to their chest. It was supposed to come out in November, and now... Stay. Wait for E three. You'll see more Halo. Why should I? That game should have been playable November. So what did they have without Halo then at E three? Was it all gonna be like a what a, a perfect dark showcase? Yeah, right. Yeah, we'll see that. Even even that is uh, far away. Right. Yeah. None of this stuff is ready, and it's years. I mean, we're we're not talking about next E three. We're talking about two three years after that. So. Um, and, and at the meantime, Sony, you know, they're, they're not Herman Holtz comes out saying, hey, man, we're, you know, we got 25 uh, games that, that we're developing. And, you know, half of those are freaking brand new IP. Yeah. So exactly. that, that means we're not just getting sequels to games that we like already. But again, they're trying with brand new IP, brand new IP, such as, uh, you know, Returnal, such as, you know, um, uh, Kina, um, just uh, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, different stuff like that that they're trying, and a lot of that stuff knocks it out the park, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And so, that's and, 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 yeah, exactly. And, and that's a t- one testament to that, Jay, is the mere fact that a lot of these Sony IPs go off to have TV series and movies made after them. Mm-hmm. That tells you how good that the game was or the franchise is that it, it hit just right, yeah. And they, and they did and the thing is to and I, I said this again last week was like 
when we were talking about this future of like with Phil again, like this whole promise that he's doing, and we did a, a game last week of guess the quote, and you know he said, uh, you know, I, two to three years, I signed some deals now for exclusives in two to three years. I didn't want to show now because you know why would I do that? I want you to focus on the games that are coming out now, like Sea of Thieves and stuff. Hint, hint. That will tell you. He said that in 2017. He signed deals on 2018. He signed deals in two to three years that you'll see exclusives. Big AAA. We're in 2021. You are over your three-year promise that you stated. Where the hell were they? Was it medium? Was that the thing that you were talking about that you signed back then? Because I, he's talking out his ass, and and it was it was defense because he didn't show enough at E3. Remember the last two E3s, people forget, but 2019's E3 was a shit show. It was horrible because all Microsoft did was show third-party games and show bleeding ass and Halo bullshit at the end of their show and talked about this, the Xbox name of the series of uh, the, 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 the Xbox. That, that was it. 2019. Mm-hmm. It was nothing. 2019. They didn't even talk about it. They, they, they hinted at Project Scarlet. That's what they did. And they showed yeah. Halo. Yeah. That was it. They had the whole station themselves. Sony was on vacation. Sony didn't show anything. And they had the whole stage, and he didn't use that time to show any new stuff. Then they had XO19, where they showed Everwild, and then that was it. And then he did the the Hellblade 2 at the other game. That's 2019. We are in 2021. And know what? Don't give me that pandemic bullshit that I talked about last week. Because Sony, how the hell Sony get all these games out? And they review well, and they're and, and that's what I was trying to get to. The point was is that these to have a game, and you said this to have a game come out, be successful, reviewed well, and potentially be discussions for game of the year from from reviewers, and just kind of have that happen, like just with Returnal, that takes a lot. Even Miles Morales, like to make that game sell the way it is, that takes a lot of effort. We don't even know what these games are that Microsoft is going to release. Nonetheless, if they're going to be reviewable and like great reviews on day one, not this content coming bullshit, and whether they're going to be accepted by the industry and be recognized as anything that's worth a damn. And then if they get a sequel after that, who knows? Yeah. There's so much unproven potential there. I don't know how you're excited for it. The idea of it is interesting, but no way should that mon- no way should that take over what is happening right now or in the next year or so. You know, absolutely. Yeah, Mooch is saying like, you know, shout out to Mooch. Like, you know, he said in 2019 was make or break for Xbox. Hell, last year was was make or break. Was make or break. Remember? People. And guess what they got? It was do or die. Because I remember when they showed. Um, when they showed their showcase and Greenberg had to come out and apologize because it didn't demonstrate next generation games, right? He had apologized for overhyping the Xbox showcase. Then everybody was like, wait till July. That's the first party show. That's the first, that's the be- that's what we're doing. Then Sony in between there just shook the world because they did everything in one show. Microsoft will still wait for the next show. That show comes and that's where you get Craig from. Tell me if that's make or break. Dude, the, those everything's yeah. against them. Like that, and that's Phil. Like, how the hell does this guy still walk with his chest out, chin up, talking bullshit, and people still love him when this is the results that you're getting year after year? This is not a couple of months. This is not getting the cobwebs out. This is his performance since 2012, 2013. Yeah. We yeah, are people, in 2021. People, people think. People keep forgetting, Jazz. Field took over four months after uh, the last generation console yes. launched, right? Mm-hmm. Donnie D, he, yeah, you man. know, he came out, said what he said. They let him go four months later. Um, why do people refuse to still hold him accountable, uh, Phil Spencer? They act like yeah. he's, no well, you got to give him time. It takes time for mm-hmm. this stuff yeah. to happen. And, and I'm like, geez, this is two generations later. Yeah. Jim Ryan, how long has he been there? Exactly. He hasn't been in that position the whole yep. generation. Maybe, maybe a, he's the maybe third a, guy up. A, yeah, maybe a year, two. He, maybe he's been at two years, maybe. Um, Herman Holtz has been at his Triple job H. for maybe, you know, two. You know, both of these guys are new at their particular positions. Yeah. And yet they were able to come out and launch a console that's not only cheaper than a competition, but it's outdoing it. 
in performance. It's outdoing it in the games department. It's outdoing it under every metric. And selling and not only that, than the previous one. Exactly. They're doubling down on these games. They're doubling down on PS5. Um, they're doubling down on VR2. Oh, I can't I mean, wait for guys VR2, are, man. Mm-mm. They're just doubling down on everything that us you know it's music to our ears it's just i mean exactly. they're just singing in our they're it's singing easy. sweet nothings in our ears and i know <laughs> if you're xbox guy i know you gotta i know you gotta hate that man because phil is not all he's doing is just blowing smoke um yeah think about it we got ratchet and clank coming out right oh god we what know insomniac game? is you know we know they just dropped Miles Morales, Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales. They just, uh, they're about to drop in, in a few weeks, Ratchet and Clank. They're working on um, Spider-Man 2. We got, you know, supposedly Uncharted 5 coming, um, according to those leaks from the, you know, this lawsuit between Epic and all that stuff. We got The Last of Us um, Part 1 remake. Yeah, um, right. And then the multiplayer. That's coming. That the multiplayer. The is the, uh, uh, yeah, factions is coming. I mean, it's just so many other things that these guys are doing. And then the on deals, top dude. of the God of War. On top and of, on top of the Horizon deals, Forbidden though. West. On top of Final exactly. Fantasy 16. On top of exactly. Final Fantasy. The, the other, the other Seven, remake. Uh, Integrate. Yeah, integrate. Remake Integrate. On, on, top, yeah, of on top of sta- uh, sta- the sequels of, to those. Yeah, and on top of the friggin' um, Ghostwire Tokyo and, yes. and Death Loop. Yep, and Death Loop and, and Project right. Atheo for spoken. Yeah, like yeah. you got to look at that level on stuff. Yeah. And, like the thing is that that's doesn't big stop stuff, at that first party. That's not. Yeah. That's not. That's not some little small battlefield oh. type thing. That is huge. That's that is see see what I mean. Like when you have system sellers, these are system sellers. These are if you're a big fan of Final Fantasy, if you're a big fan of you know stuff like that. Guess what? This gives you a reason to get it because you're not going to be playing anywhere else outside of PC per mm-hmm. se. Um, and I believe P- even the PC guys are still waiting on Final Fantasy VII remake for yeah, PC, that's right? All, yeah, and that hadn't came. And so no. again, there's just this this treatment, this this I call it white glove treatment that PlayStation fans get that Xbox guys don't. And that's I can see why them you know they can be salty over that. Yeah. But at the same time, if you tell him Phil he's the greatest, you know, you call him Phil Dominus and oh, and say he's dominating and he gave you Game Pass. And if you just, you know, every time somebody asks you, you know, what does Xbox have? You know, where are the games? They just yell Game Pass and then they take off running. You know, well, <laughs> you, you got to have something more than that, well, guys. And that's the thing. The thing is, is that, hey, if you like Game Pass and it's satisfied what your gaming needs are, then fine. What I don't appreciate is saying that Game Pass is the future. xCloud is the future. When Nintendo and Sony it's, are doing are exactly what J-Dub not. said, like they're yep. giving games that you cannot deny are exciting. How does that go unrecognized? But the fact that you could get a box of Pop-Tots and play some bullshit on Game Pass and play while you're taking a shit on your phone, that stuff is, is, is something that gone as more attention or more internet capping and clout than the actually delivery of games. If you're all gamers and not some bullshit Twitter people, well then basically that stuff matters. The fact that Sony and Nintendo are delivering games for their consoles, services to support their consoles with games and content, how the hell does that not the future of gaming, but bullshit what Phil's doing on Game Pass, that's Dominus, that is the future, that is what everybody needs to follow and they've been under delivering for years, not months, not weeks, years and years to come. And what do you think Sony and Nintendo are doing? We just listed a whole bunch of games coming out. And last week, if you go back to listen to the show, I compared both of their showcases showing Microsoft's bullshit trailer reel and then showing Sony's of how many of those games were actually played, released and what's coming out that we're going to play with release dates. It was night and day. Microsoft had a bunch of just fodder. Like, it was just like, hey, you remember Avowed? Like, I'm like, what's the game? And that goes right into Starfield. Now they bought Bethesda. They pulled Bethesda into this fuck shit. Now, Bethesda now is part of all this Phil Ness bullshit. And one of the things that, we're, the main thing we'll talk about is this exclusivity. And before I, I ask J-Dub this stuff. I'm gonna hit the grinds table, and I'm gonna we're gonna do this exclusivity thing, talking about Starfield or uh, we'll talk it. Uh, you know, 
chocolate sloth fish or whatever the hell you want to call it. But we will go to the grinds board, the grinds table for this one. So here we go. Shout out to over 70 people watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We just hit 800 subs today. Thank you again, everybody. Congrats, hit that like button. Congrats. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks, man. It's amazing. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, <laughs> there's no yellow chairs here. I can tell you that bullshit. Uh, I buy everything. <laughs> I play. And I just give you my honest opinion as a consumer. And I'm not trying to get in bed with any devs or any horse shit like that. It is what it is. This is how I feel. And that's why I bring people on that, you know, speak how they feel too. And the thing is, is that this is the thing, Jay. No, what's interesting is that if what we speak about comes true, how that is only beneficial to, the, to Xbox. That's the thing. Like if all the shit that I grind about actually happens – Xbox wins. Mm-hmm. What am I saying now? Oh, stop saying all this stuff. Why? It's the goddamn truth. And if you don't say it now, you, you would you going to be the first one to go, see, I told you, I just waited and kept my mouth shut and Phil poked it in my ear and out my ass. And look, he delivered. <laughs> you know what? If I walked outside every fucking day and looked at the clouds and said, it's going to rain and go back inside next day, yep. it's going to rain. Go back on Twitter. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. And then what happens? Eventually you go outside. It's raining. And then when I go to Twitter, see, I was right. See, you I just said it was going to rain for the last fucking three months. Facts. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, oh, Obviously, if you just keep getting the games. And then like the thing is, is that you see this hype on the internet. It's like Microsoft's making games. Dude, no fucking shit. They should be making games. The yep. thing is, is that what kind of games, what quality, what content, what is it going to look like in Game Pass? That's all the questions that are, that Phil does not address at all. Yeah. What's Halo Free to Play look like? Who knows? Yeah, they, they. I mean, really, that's the truth. They haven't shown us anything outside of some PC screenshots of, um, of Halo Infinite, and it's like people keep forgetting. Prior to them showing us last June, last July, when they showed us Halo Infinite video, um, they were showing screenshots. And guess what? Those screenshots look pretty good, right? Well, when we finally got the fucking gameplay, pardon my French, um, that was a whole different story. Oh, yeah. And we can't we can't say, oh, well, that was unoptimized on the console because it was high-end PC footage. And that's the problem. They keep showing us PC footage. Mm-hmm. Um, or, 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 or PC, PC game is like all these free, like, oh, ultra wide What's... screen support. Dude, what yeah. the hell does this game look like? Don't give me, oh, tell me ultra wide screen support. Don't tell me how the music is made. Show yeah. me the game. Uh, that's, listen, here's the thing that, that's, that's why I'm going to be honest, man. I have no faith in Halo. And the first that's thing so, they're going to so say, sad, well, man, it's free. It's free in Game Pass. It's uh... free to play. So you can't be. You know, and that goes back to the original problem that people had with Game Pass. An excuse for mediocrity. Yes. It's like, is that, are they going to use that excuse? Well, it's in Halo, so you really can't be mad. Yes, you can be mad because you've been waiting for two fucking generations. We've been saying wait to E3 every fucking year. Mm -hmm. Here it is, another generation, another E3. And let's face it. um, Let's face it, right? Um. Microsoft had E3 all to themselves that year. You remember that? Yep, 2019. All to themselves, and they failed. They and came they, out apologizing. The stage opened up. Yeah, the stage opened up. They showed the wrestlers. They never showed yeah. Gears campaign. They yeah. held on. They made Ninja stream Gears campaign the day before it released out on Mixer. They yeah. never spoke about the Gears campaign. They had the wrestlers playing it. They it was horrible. It was a horrible marketing for Gears Five. Horrible. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, again. 
if you have the stage to yourself, you should be able to control the narrative, control what you want shown, and show your stuff in a great light. Mm-hmm. I I'm at the point right is that I don't think Microsoft knows what the game. Well, I'm not going to say what the gamers want because they have their fan base and their fan base loves Phil Spencer. They they'll tell you they love the direction, right? Yeah. Uh, but the, the the saying it is one thing. And, and proving it is another because the proof is in the pudding. They don't play the games. They don't buy the games. They don't support them. But they will sure, you know, surely have a strong technical eye. They break out the magnifying glass for every frame and every pixel for Sony games. But when it comes to Xbox game, all of a sudden they have glaucoma. They have blurry vision. <laughs> they can't. They can't really keep the same energy. You see no, what I'm saying? Oh yeah, no man. No, it, or it's like, oh, the rest of it's gonna come. Like it's a service yeah. game. Like it's gonna be there. And and then that's the other thing that you know that triggered me from last week, where I followed the um, you know what what the Halo interview did said, and you know how he was talking about not knowing where to bring in the classic guns, and you know we're gonna hear from the community and bring guns in, and it's like. Dude, you are, that was in February. You are delayed over a year. How can you be talking about day one content and bringing more? Oh, well, it's a service game and stuff. And I'm like, you're going to pull that Sea of Thieves bullshit with a game that's been delayed over a, a year? A whole year after? Remember, yeah. Yeah. Halo wasn't going to have ray tracing in it. Yeah, right? Oh, yep. Remember, they because they said we were going to do it in time. Guess what? There's a chance even a year later when this game drops, it's it still not have ray tracing or any of the other stuff that 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 should have been in there, and that's a problem. That's a problem to me. But I already see the Xbox guys; they've oh, already started giving it a pass. Yeah, yeah they're. It's well, right. it's it's free to play. It's it's going to be and people only buy the game for the multiplayer. And anyway. never Halo was never a looker, which that's horseshit. Yeah. Look at Halo yeah. Five and how that was shown at E3, and there was the oohs and ahs yeah. of Halo Five. Halo, Listen, Halo is your premier franchise. Xbox would be nothing is. without Halo. If Halo does not deliver mm-hmm. what it's expected to deliver, Rest and people make excuses, dude, then if they and this is my thing, if they're willing to do that to Halo, you could say goodbye to Perfect Doc, yep. goodbye to Fable, goodbye yep. to all that shit. Because if they're yep. willing to to show, and that was the thing that disappointed me the most with Halo showing last year was that they were they approved to show Halo in that light, knowing it's the premier franchise. Like you don't do that, Mario. Like take the, the, Nintendo takes Mario if he has like a different shade mustache yep. on some bootleg game because that's their brand. Meanwhile, yeah. they make Halo going out there look like a goddamn bum fighting a hairless Craig. And yeah. they, they that's how they wanted to show their yeah. game and had no problems with all the pop in, all the shit, and led with it in their their presentation for next generation. They led with that shit. That wasn't hidden. That was their they led with that. With booty clapping and everybody talking in that showcase, they led with their premier franchise. So if they're willing to show Hairless Craig and horse shit like that. Get ready for what Fable's gonna look like, Perfect <coughs> Dark, all this shit. They, yep. They're willing. They, they're gonna throw it under the on the, under the bus, and then say, "Well, Gears is a great graphics." Yeah, well, when's Gears coming out now? If you're gonna bound on Gears being the showman, I get ready. That's for the Xbox Triple Series X. That's when mm-hmm. that comes out, the Phil Spencer porn dildo edition, where you could fuck Phil Spencer because that's all you want to do anyway. Yeah. God damn it. Get me all wound up. So there's the thing now. Talking about exclusives, that's the other thing. I recall when Phil was whoring himself out, putting everything on PC, exclusives were hell. That was that was not nice. You had all your all your 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 podcasts going, oh, oh, Sony's anti-consumer. It's all about spreading the love and more people to play your games makes more people yeah. content. Oh, you know, that's why Microsoft's putting their games everywhere like a $2 hooker. Oh, my goodness. Put everything on Steam. Put it in there. That's, Sony is being antiquated. They're putting all their games behind, a, behind a, you know, walled gardens. It's all about more people to play your games. And I want to ask you, how did that work out for Bleeding Ass? Less than a year, they stopped giving content for Bleeding Ass. That more people to play on t- one trillion devices. PCs galore. Didn't help shit. Halo 5, Gears 5. They turned off the goddamn... Did you hear this shit, Jay? With with Gears 5, Mm -hmm. they heard that 40% of the console players turned off crossplay because they don't want to play with goddamn PC players. Yeah. 
Yeah, Sorry, they Merck. Don't. They don't want to play with you, Merck. Yeah. They turned it off. Well, guess what? It was causing a longer queue to play games. So guess what Microsoft did? The consumer-friendly, option-friendly Phil Spencer said, cancel that option, force cross-play with console and PC. There's your Operation 7 update, bitches. Now you have to play with PC and ranked because you can't turn it off because it was holding up the queue to look for games. Why is that? I thought more people play games. I thought Xbox, these games on every device means they're bigger install base. Why is the install base drying up? Yep. It's all bullshit. Jay, Jay, it's all bullshit. Listen, you're absolutely right. And this is why, right? Whatever from this point on, whatever happens to Xbox, whether it goes the way of the Dodo Bird or go third party or whatever, these guys have supported that along with Phil Spencer in running Xbox into the ground. Yeah, exactly. They have supported it the whole way. They drove it right. Then they're gonna turn they're gonna turn around, look stupid, and wonder how did they get here. And all we're gonna do is play our exclusives on PlayStation, point fingers, laugh. And pull up all of the tweets and all of the videos that these guys are, you know, making shrines to Phil Spencer and seeing that the the industry is changing and it's changing in Microsoft's favor and stuff like that. When obviously Sony and Nintendo are outselling Xbox, not only in hardware but services and everything else. So I don't know, man. This 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 is this is something different, man. I, I've never. I don't back when the Dreamcast days. I never remember the sega guys um just agreeing with everything sega said and just and just you know just walking nah, that point i, I, don't know, I never man. i, don't I, know I never remember that i yeah. don't know what they did with this whole like putting these executives in the public limelight and you know it was a creative move and i and i and the thing is that to be honest like i thought Phil Spencer in 2013, I thought that he would be the proper person to lead Xbox because he was there in game studios. He ran their game studio, so he would know the games that would come to the console. I would never thought that he would be the worst head to bring games to the console when you led Microsoft Studios for all those years. You came after Ed Freeze. After Robbie, after Robbie Bach to Ed Freeze, away from Shane Kim, Shane Kim handed the the keys to the, to the Microsoft Studios to Phil Spencer, who ran on the Shane Kim, who went to GameStop. You ran the whole show from you were there from day one. You always tell everybody, you you worked with Ed Freeze. You worked with the heart and soul of what Xbox does and how they established this brand against Sony. It was created to beat Sony. And how the hell when you run the show? Do we have the worst set of first-party games and lacking first-party content when we never even had this issue throughout all the Xbox generation? You you yep. built the Xbox on first-party content because that's all the people that would give a shit about you. And then to kind of turn this a whole 180 and now be this kind of like multi-plat, most powerful console and just kind of not deliver this, it's ridiculous. And on top of that, now you just keep buying everybody, and now all of a sudden their shit becomes your shit. You're not even creating this stuff. And this is one of the things that that we're going to get into with Starfield, right? This whole exclusivity talk. First, I'd like to point out, exclusives matter. That's where we're going with this whole thing. Because for the last couple of years, exclusives didn't matter more people to play your games and all that horse shit and that didn't work because you could see how everybody is getting all hot and bothered about this exclusivity with starfield and the thing is is now all of a sudden exclusives matter and you want to know what starfield needs to come out it needs to be a fucking 99 metacritic and be only on game pass that's the kind of shit that microsoft needs all right this game needs to be an exclusive but people are like I don't understand. This is the Jay's like they I don't understand why we still questioning about Starfield being exclusive. You wanna know why? You wanna know yeah. why we keep questioning? Is because your God and Savior Phil Spencer never said it was. Yeah. Yep. You got people going, Well, I wouldn't have spent seven billion dollars and made a multi plat, so you're an idiot for thinking that it's a multi-plat. That's good. I'm glad it's your $7 billion. 
I w- why would you buy that company if you weren't going to make it exclusive? Mm-hmm. Sources tell me that this is exclusive. You want to know what? Know who didn't tell you it's exclusive? Phil Spencer, Dirty Ass Booty, and Aaron Greenberg. Those yep. people did not say Starfield is coming out exclusively on Xbox. And guess what? They had the opportunity to say this. They had their circle jerk in March, on February. Phil was there. Greenberg was there. They flew them out. Don't you remember? They put the masks on them. He's sitting next to Todd Howard. He's sitting next to, to the other dude. And they're all sitting around there. And he looked Phil Spencer in the fucking eye. And what does Phil Spencer say? Uh, there are contract deals and things that... And I'll read it, trust me. But I'm just elaborating right now. There were contract deals and, and things that we might do. But it's going to be where... I just want Xbox gamers to know that wherever Game Pass is, the games will be there. No shit. Because the game is launching in Game Pass. Because that is the only thing. That Phil Spencer confirmed when the Bethesda purchase occurred with CNN and with all the CNET and all the other bullshit. He was the only thing he said was Bethesda games are coming in Game Pass. So the only thing he confirmed was he reconfirmed that saying that wherever Game Pass is, this game will be. Yeah. So he just reconfirming that the game's launching in Game Pass. But he has yet to said what platforms this game will release on. And he had the opportunity right there. So that's why it's still a question. Chez, merely a week ago, everyone was arguing on Twitter about the Stalker 2. Yeah, oh, oh, so it's shit. Exclusive, it's, it's exclusive to Xbox. It's exclusive. Phil cut the check. Yada, yada, yada. Uh-huh. Suck it, ponies. You wish. And then what happens? Now we find out it's a three-month. <laughs> it's a three-month three month. exclusive. <laughs> so this is why I say, until this game comes out, Shut the fuck up. Exactly. You don't and, know and, what's well, going that's on. another issue on top of that. That we don't even know. And after Fallout 76, I don't give a shit if Todd Howard was not making that game. Todd Howard pimped that game out in his leather jacket at E3 2018. Yep. And he didn't yep. say, yo, here's the team right here that's building Fallout 76. Peace out, bitches. Oh no. Todd Howard with his leather jacket, cuffed up, collar up. Hyped up Fallout 76 as this is the online Fallout you've been dreaming of. And he milked yep. the shit out of that thing at that conference. And now Absolutely. when that thing was trash and hit the high hills, all of a sudden, oh, Todd wasn't involved. He was just a consultant. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was. Because he introduced the real leaders of the team during his presentation. Oh, no, no, no. So, Mr. S- Mr. Star Power... He, you know, maybe this is Fallout in space. That's what this is supposed to be. They've been talking about this thing since since Fallout 4 launched. After Fallout 4 launched in like 2015 or some bullshit like that, this thing was talked about. This thing has been working on for all this time, okay? We don't know what it is. I hope it's good. It will be great to have a Fallout in space. It'll be interesting to see if we could go around planets and all this other horse shit. Well, show me more. But all I'm saying is, is the exclusivity and Phil had the opportunity. Okay, and just to say exactly what Phil quoted, this is what right in the camera. Right. And this is what Phil said. And this is why people like I just don't understand why why are people still questioning this? Because this is what Phil said. All right. If you're an Xbox customer. The thing I want you to know uh, that this is delivering great exclusive games that you ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. That's our goal. That's why we're doing this. That's the root of this partnership. Game pass. Okay. There are con- now he goes, and now he should have just stopped there. He should have just said, example, Starfield will be a game that's only shipping on Xbox and PC where Game Pass is. More to come at E3 this year. Why didn't you say that? Why didn't you just say that? Why are you holding? St- why are you not mentioning Starfield as an example of this? You're sitting now. You had a show March 11th. You had a show. Why would you not just say right after that sentence? And Todd, please would you, it, Starfield's already announced. It's not a secret. Todd, tell them. And Starfield will be one of the first games that we're going to ship where Game Pass is, and it's going to be exclusive to Xbox and PC. More to come at E3 this year. Thank you very much. 
why. Instead, after saying that statement, here comes the contract shit. However, there are contractual obligations that we're going to see through as we always do. We have games that exist on other platforms, and we're going to support those games on the platforms they're on. Again, not given specifics. Which games, Phil? Contractual obligations. Are you speaking about Deathloop? Or are you talking about Starfield? Other games. Are you talking about Elder War, Elder Scrolls? And then he continues. Wait a second. He's not done yet. Then he yep. says, even in the future, there might be things that either have contractual things or legacy on other platforms that will go do. The yep. fuck does that mean? And, 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 you know, Jeff Grubb, who's the one that's really pushing this button, says he left the door open for possibly some new unannounced games that may still launch on PlayStation 5 and Switch. What I ask you, Jay, is why even say that? What does it... Wh you, have a, a, you have your audience watching you. You have Bethesda yep. right there. Why do you even need to make that statement that in the future there might be games come to PlayStation? Who cares? Yeah. Why would you even say that? It makes uh, no sense. Why would you yeah. even be that holistic and just speaking about that? I don't understand it. Like, be bold. Yeah. Well, it's because they, they have a bunch of retards questioning And this is Phil. Day. This is not yeah. media. This is not insiders. Yeah. This is his quote looking right at the screen, telling you the audience on this. This is his words. This is yeah. not no insider bullshit. This is his words. Well, Why let's think about that? it. They, um, Phil, he, you know, he, he's kind of been doing this ever this since he Ness, got man. this position. This is the Phil Ness. Yeah, it's, it's the Phil Ness. Mm -hmm. He knows these guys. He's on these podcasts. He sees these tweets every day. These guys out there cashing checks that their ass can't possibly, you know, <laughs> handle. Yep. And so he always, you know, he says stuff without saying stuff. But he leaves it to open interpretation. He could have easily went out there and say, yep, all of our games will be exclusive to Game Pass. Done. Uh, all PC of them will be exclusive to Xbox. And, and let's just say, yeah, let's just say PC and Xbox. And, and, and that's it. That's it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But he didn't say that. No. He refused to say that. But he wanted to throw a bone, right, to his install base, some of his diehards, um, and these guys, they, they pick certain parts of things that he said to say, see, yep, he said it. He said it. exclusive, Never said exclusive. It. Never once said it. Um, and, that, and that's and so, why we're talking about it today yeah. in fucking May is because he could have yeah. just said Starfield exclusive and this would have been done. And then we could say, show us the game. I don't care. But why wouldn't you say this? It's been announced since 2018. Yep. You had Todd Howard sitting right there. You had you were sitting there. This was the Bethesda show. This wasn't yep. like in passing an interview with like Inquire or some bullshit like that. This was a purposefully he addressed the exclusivity talk directly at this thing. Like he made a point of it because there was certain things even before this statement where he left the door open. You'll see some games on other platforms. Remember that quote in their Xbox Wire? Again, yep. Xbox. You want to I'm going to tell you something. I got sources as well. Okay? Jay, I got fucking inside sources. I might hit 800 subscribers. You might think that's a small deal. But I got sources as well. Yeah. I got two. They're fucking... Un they, they are on point all the time. You know? I'm And I'm going to know what? I'm going to say who my sources are right here live. I'm going to sell them out right now. My two sources that tell me exactly where this is going. J-Dub and Foxy News UK. Jade, no. No, I'm telling you right now, dude. I'm going to tell you my sources. Get ready. Hit that like button, guys. Please. You heard it here first live. This is exclusive right now. Here are my sources. Ready? My two fucking eyeballs. There, there are go. my sources right there. I am just reading what I see. Okay? you. I could tell you right now going, guess what? Halo is in trouble. I don't need no source in a party chat on Xbox to tell me that. My two sources told me the goddamn video that I saw. My two eyeballs said, holy shit, that doesn't look like Halo. Those are my two sources right there. Or okay. the, the lead developer leaving. There's um, my, I read right, that too. Right my two eyeballs launched, saw that too. Was supposed to launch, you know. 
common sense. Yep, my two eyeballs are reading his quotes right here. Right? I don't, I don't need, my, there you go. Put all the eyeballs in chat. Everybody got sources right there. You can't deny what you see. Yep. And when you're seeing quotes, when you, and, and you know what? I also got two other sources. My two fucking earlobes. There we go. My two ears. I got four sources. Here we go. The thing is, is that this is what they're showing. You could tell me that we're, oh, yeah, you know what? I heard somebody, the initiative is split into four teams. It's a fucking four-way match over there. They got five games they're making. Until they show it, I don't give a shit. Yep. All right? Phil Spencer could have squashed this. He knew. This is the thing, Grinders. He knew leading up to the reason why he addressed this at that circle jerk was because people were questioning what the exclusivity of Bethesda was in March. Ever since September, they've been questioning this. That's why he made the statement, and it was just a bunch of Phil Ness. He could have said right there, Starfield will be an exclusive to Xbox and PC. What are you waiting for? And I'm not saying it is or is not, because guess what? It needs to be. And if it needs to be, and we know that Microsoft needs this exclusive why wouldn't you just say it? That's the point. It's like, why wouldn't you just say it? And then on top of that, this is the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something else here. Leakers and its sources and all this other stuff, you know, Jeff Grubb wrote this thing. The thing yeah. is, is that it's entertaining, but all this does is draw track. I saw so many articles, so many videos, so many just confirming. And I'm like, did anybody know that it's just Jeff Grubb saying this? Because he has some statement in here. I've separately confirmed that this situation applies to Starfield through sources familiar with the decision. That is, why is this not listed as a rumor? Why do I see this listed as confirmation? Microsoft never put this in confirmation. Xbox Wire said some games will be on other platforms. Phil, I just read you his quotes. Yeah. yeah. This is how do you come out and have some sort of insider confirm and people go confirmed. Yeah. This is still a rumor because Phil mm -hmm. had a chance to squash this. And I'm not sitting here going, oh, my God. I'm hoping and praying, rubbing my nipples, rubbing myself in oil because this is the potential to go on PlayStation. I don't give a shit because I'm telling you right now, this needs we'll play to it on be PC exclusive. anyway. Play it on PC. I'm going to buy it on Steam. <laughs> so fuck you, Game Pass. That's exactly. another thing. Well, I got that fucking Jay. I got that fucking story. I got to show you that one. But yeah. the thing is, is that this is just, I'm not saying they're lying, but this is the problem that I'm having. Xbox fans, Jay, right? Xbox mm -hmm. fans are looking for that out of body moment, the the yes. the celebration. Oh my god, like that that backwards compatibility yeah. announcement, right? Yep. And this is what I'm trying to say. Even if this is true, it basically now just reconfirms Jeff Grubb. Why couldn't this be a moment? This takes away from your Xbox moment that you've been looking for. That's why when you come to E3 and half the shit is leaked because of people like this. And and you let you run media because of rumors and stuff like this. It takes away your Xbox moment when you see Sony fans cheering and clapping in those reaction videos, and you see those reaction videos and go, "Oh man, like wh why can I feel like that, guys? It's E3. Why am I not feeling like that?" Look at the Miles Morales reaction video. Look at that stuff, and they're doing it with games. But imagine if they were able to do this and Microsoft get in front of this and give their fans that reaction, <coughs> that celebration, that surprise. But instead, Phil hides his coward ass behind the Bethesda bullshit statements that we just read and lets a Jeff Grubb or media confirm their shit and doesn't get in front of this stuff. So now when Phil says, hey, Starfield's exclusive, everybody's like, oh, Jeff Grubb was right. <laughs> Go to his channel. Like, you just gave the props to somebody else, Microsoft, instead of owning it and celebrating it with your fans. Don't you realize this shit ruins E3? This shit ruins Microsoft announcements because then even the Sony ponies are like, oh, well, whatever, we knew this already. Well, fuck it. Yep. You don't even get a genuine bait and, and, and a way to drive it into the, the, the pony hooves. 
You can't even yeah. get them because guess what? They just go, oh, we knew that already. Move on. Did you check out Ratchet? Hey, you check out Horizon? They moved on. Well, and speaking to that, I totally agree with you on that because doing all those leaks and stuff that was happening, we found out um, Naughty Dog was working on The Last of Us 1 remake. Yes. Right. Yeah. That mm-hmm. would that would have been a great E three moment to be able to have that to come out on right? screen. That took away they, some bullshit. Yeah. That I sucked. was mad because they really ruined it for me. Like that could have been the experience that gamers really look forward to. Whether you like it or not, E three is a big thing. Or just just being announcements, in the even a state of, of play, dude. Yeah, like the, anything. Yeah. The the company who's doing it should get. The recognition and the like, they should yes. get the kind of celebration. Like when so, like imagine if we saw a bunch of PlayStation Five, you know, models before they showed it at the thing. Would you get those reactions yeah. that we got with the PlayStation Five? Not at all. Meanwhile, at they were showing Xbox dev kits and stuff. So, like the Microsoft has so many leaks, it's disgusting. And the problem is, is they they need to lock that shit down because you yeah. give you're giving clout. And 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 not saying that this is bad because this is what his job is is to get is to do this venture beat now this article here must it's going to be quoted and shown and, and basically you know confirmed everywhere 50, yeah 50, 50 podcasts is going to be we're uh, doing it made, exactly uh, yeah, exactly around this thing so guess what by the time that comes true or not comes true it won't even matter people would have moved on All and right. it does like, take yeah, the thunder right. yeah and what's interesting Joe Jay is this the thing like. If you look, and I said, he goes here, this is his, his article. Microsoft has no plans to release Bethesda's upcoming space role-playing game on Sony's competing PlayStation. Microsoft has no plans, he says. This shouldn't be a surprise because after Phil Spencer said in March that Microsoft acquired a, a Bethesda to add exclusives to Game Pass. Yeah. Well... The thing is, is that's very interesting because I read you, you Phil's quote. Did, Pass, he, but you did still, he even say? He never said it's never on PlayStation. PlayStation. He never did that. Yeah. And now Listen, he goes, but, but wait, just because j- it, yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, go I'm ahead. just saying. But I've separately confirmed that this is to familiar with the decision. This is the other thing. He goes, but some people keep asking why Starfield PS5 don't have the insight into Microsoft's reasoning, and he uses Minecraft as an example, like Minecraft Dungeons and Minecraft. And he's like, that's a platform game. But I would also question: What about Psychonauts Two? What about uh, what about um, uh, Psychonauts Two? What about Outer Worlds? What mm-hmm. about um, what about uh, what is that other game? Star- uh, um, what's the-, the three. No, what the I hell ju- is it? Um, that that I three game that it. came out with the uh, In Exiles game. Well, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that was a multi plat game too. Yeah. So like the thing is, is that the the studios that they purchased, the games that already were in development wound up being multi-platform. Psychonauts 2 is the most recent one that we still haven't seen yet. And uh, uh, I forgot what the hell it was. It was, uh, it was what, I don't forget what it was, but it was an Exiles game. They made that, right? Mm -hmm. This is the thing that I find interesting right here. He goes here, he goes, and then he goes like here. (laughs) He says, with Game Pass now the center of Xbox's ecosystem, it's become more important for Microsoft to invest in exclusive content and IP that increases the value of service and leads to new user acquisitions. Wow, is that their strategy? Who said that? Matt Booty? Aaron Greenberg? Phil Spencer? Satya? Oh, no. Daniel Ahmad, an analyst. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. So where is Microsoft's confirmation in this whole article? i like to know. Then, on top of that, the next sentence says, Microsoft likely did investigate its financials would look like if it made Bethesda games exclusive or not. And in the end, it chose exclusivity. Did it? Because didn't I just read the quote? He says they they thought about the financials and they chose exclusivity. Then why the hell did Phil say this? Jeff Grubb, you wrote this one too. But he also left the door open for possibly some new unannounced games still launching on PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch. Even in the future, Phil says... There might be things that have either contractual things or legacy on other platform that will go do. So how does Phil say that quote, but we're here saying that Microsoft did investigate its financials and if it made Bethesda games exclusive, and in the end, it chose exclusivity. Where's that quote? Where's that? How are we making that conclusion? Phil basically yeah. said there will be games that we will put on other platforms. So... Unless the only thing I can think of is that unless Game Pass is so doing so poorly, because remember they didn't show the numbers for the first quarter. 
They refused to. They didn't show it. The last thing they said was $18 million. Yet again, another situation where Jez Corden said, oh, I hear it's at $24 million. You yeah. hear it's at $24 million. Why didn't stuff. Satya confirm $24 million? This is what I don't understand. I'm like, how are we taking rumors and speculation or rumors and bullshit from these websites and calling them confirmed? Microsoft has to confirm this stuff if you want to stay confirmed. Satya, out of his mouth, said $18 million. It's in the financials call. He said $15 million the, finan- the, the month before that. Now we had March financial call. He didn't say shit. Why? Maybe they're losing a lot. Maybe Game Pass is not growing like it should. Which I speculated because I said only 3 million in the biggest quarter of the year with the brand new console, EA games, and Game Pass uh, cloud on all phones. You only grew 3 million subscribers. Yeah. And now the next quarter, you don't announce your numbers anymore. Oh, really? What happened? And think about it. At the end of that quarter, what did they do? Two weeks before it comes out, Outriders and Game Pass. Yeah. A week before it comes out, uh, MLB and Game Pass. You made people cancel pre-orders. That yeah. don't sound very smooth. That sounds very kind of <clears throat> like yeah. I won't pre-order anymore. This sounds a little wild. Yeah. Why was that? Was that because Game Pass wasn't doing so? Maybe to give Jeff, you know, whatever he says. And I'm not saying he's lying. All I'm saying is why we're taking some spec. This is fact when Microsoft themselves have not confirmed it. And shame on them. Shame on Microsoft for not confirming this and letting this become somebody else's story. That's my problem. Well, Phil, I, I, stop it. Yeah, anyway, Jay, sorry. I think, I think um, by the way, the game you were referring to was uh, Wasteland 3. Wasteland 3, was, there it was. Yeah. Multiplayer. Exactly. I think it's, I think Phil and them let that, let that number, uh, let that information sit out there. Because it's plausible deniability. They yeah. can always say, well, we never really said that, you know. Yeah. But it, it makes them look good from the other side. So they just let the people do the work for them, you know. Go out but there just, and it sucks, hype up man. stuff and market it up. And It's just as a gaming know. fan, it just seems like why don't you get in front of this news? Like why do you allow this stuff like just to kind of be confirmed? And again... I'm not saying he's on. He also ran around last year saying that Xbox Live was going to be free. Yeah, he did. You know, and then when it wasn't free, he got r- raked along the colds. Yeah. And, you know, and the thing is, too, it's like, look at this. Guess what? If this game comes out on PlayStation 5, there's going to be a lot of people eating crow and just being like deleting videos and shit. Right. But the thing mm-hmm. is, is guess what? He could just my sources are wrong. I'm sorry, man. He's got free. That's why do that. it's it's do and also he has some bets going on. I think with Smooth and Rand that it's going to come out and and you know the interesting thing was is that this started because uh, uh, what is it uh, J- uh, Greg Miller's show was uh-huh. a kind of funny games was speculating if Starfield was going to be exclusive and as they yeah. should because it was never confirmed <coughs> by confirmed. Microsoft by Phil or anybody even their PR person that it was exclusive so that is a valid point so because of that a bunch of people went into Rand's DMs Jeff Grubb's DMs and were going like I thought you said it was exclusive why are some people saying that it's not and it's because they had a re- legitimate discussion looking at what Phil said and Starfield was never confirmed first of all we don't even know what it is but yeah. it was never confirmed by Microsoft as being an exclusive. And people are like, this is not fair. Why is this always a question? Why is this always a question? Boo-hoo. Why is when Microsoft does something, it's always a question of exclusivity? And we just gave you three examples of situations where Microsoft could have said, and still to this day, Psychonauts 2 is only on Xbox and PC. Yep. Wasteland 3, yep. only on Xbox. Outer Worlds, fuck you, PlayStation. It's going to be on Xbox. Nope. They yep. shipped everything the way it was. Yep. So, and, and even Minecraft Dungeons. It was a PC exclusive. Yep. And what they yep. did was they put it on. Everybody's like, well, where's the Xbox version? They said, oh, here's the Xbox version. Oh, and we're making a Switch and a, and a PlayStation 4 version too. Who asked yep. for that? Minecraft exactly. Dungeons. <clears throat> why would you put it on multi-platforms? That's what oh. I mean. Like You created that for those platforms. By the way, the uh, Xbox Series X exclusive, the Falconeer and the Medium, um, are coming to um, <laughs> the PlayStation medium 5. Is? Yeah. 
When's the, yeah. the meeting? Remember, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was always going to be. Oh, uh, uh, well, those uh, are not even their first party things. Like, well, but still, it, it, dude, it goes back to what you're they saying put their about games how everywhere. they've been doing. They it. put their games everywhere. Let's face it, Xbox has the smallest fucking install base probably in the history of gaming, right? Um, yeah. So you're trying to cater to this extremely small fan base that doesn't really spend money. It's hopes and beliefs. Know, and, That's what it's all turned into, man. Yeah, like it's, it's yeah. almost like, and I don't want to make this like a, it's almost like telling somebody not to believe in God. Like you can't like, they just believe like they just yeah. they have this belief and they, and they think this world yeah. where Xbox comes back and it's like, dude, you gotta it's, be, I would believe that, but it's getting hard to continue to believe that as these years keep going on. Yep. It's the it's it's the listen. These guys are still living in the glory days of the 360 era, and that's why my there, dude. Uh, and listen. And, and this is why Microsoft um, starts kind of catering to them with the whole backwards compatibility yeah. stuff. Remember those days? All the OC, yeah, you know. <laughs> You know what? Oh, WWE man, kind of does the same thing too. Like they can't yeah. do new, fresh content. Instead, they bring yeah, back like remember the Undertaker, stuff. remember this match, remember yeah. all these. Like let's talk about the ins and outs of the yeah, Attitude Era. It's like yeah, that's when you were good new stuff. Yeah, but you can't. Exactly. But then you, you give me some bullshit match last night of of some horse shit re- like you know like uh, some some bullshit wrestling zombie match and stuff like that. But meanwhile, I'm watching all your. Uh, ruthless aggression Wait, about how John Cena and The Rock and all these been the Hulk. Everybody was fighting all this nostalgia yeah. when you were good. But where's yeah. your new shit? Where are your new stars? Why am I watching yeah. zombie matches? Like what the hell's going on? Zombie uh, yeah. lumberjack match. Yeah, <clears throat> and the contrast with the competition is doing right again. Exactly. T- 25, 25 games. Half of those are brand new, never done before IP. Right. So it's OK to cater um, to your sequels, to the good stuff. But people are going to ask, where's the new stuff? Well, guess what? Microsoft isn't giving you anything new. They're just giving you all the, the old stuff that you've already played for the last 15 years. Yeah. And they say you it know? runs better on some horse shit like that. Yeah. But you know, what's funny is like I was saying about how, um, you know, why when Microsoft says something exclusive, there's all these questions. And we gave you some three examples of games where they could easily just said these were exclusive to Xbox, right? Mm-hmm. And why when Sony does it, so Sony, there's no questions about it. You want to know yeah. why? Here you go. Remember exactly. Spider-Man 2018? Mm-hmm. Spider-Man 4 will never be released on an Xbox One. Confirms who? Jeff yeah. Grubb? My sources? Fucking Insomniac. Says out in a tweet, when will this go on Xbox? They go, never. 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 Here you go. Why are they always quiet? Because Phil Spencer, where's his tweet that says, Starfield will never be on a PlayStation 5. We played $7.5 billion to make this game on an Xbox platform and a PC. Let's go. This is for you, Xbox fans. This is for Game Pass. This is, here we go. Why can't Microsoft say that instead they go well we got some contracts you'll see some things maybe in the future that we might put on yeah. consoles and and yeah well, but everywhere yeah. game pass is these games the will be this. and the, the film this. that's why because you have a coward and i say it here we go guys a new phrase for grindhouse here we go this is from wrestling S- phil spencer is soft s-a-w-f-t soft he is a soft. He needs to be bold. Remember when he came out with this dick out on stage at the at the Game Awards and said, Xbox Series X and here's Hellblade, we're gonna be bold. Yep. But what happened to that bold? You talk you put your dick between your legs and you ran back in the background. Now you're being yep. bitch again and soft. Yep. You should have came out at that Bethesda deal, stood up there, kicked over the fucking table and said, Todd Howard, your bitch ass belongs to me. Where's my fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger? Where is he? Yep. Where is he? I've got news for you. You're mine now. You belong to me. I've got news for you. You're mine now. You belong to me. Yeah, we, we, we won't see it. Booty should have grabbed oh. him in a fucking ass, uh, ass lock and said, Howard, your bitch ass and your friggin' curls and shit, you belong to us now. All your shit is mine. I tell you where to put it out there. I tell you if I want to put Craig in fucking Starfield. I tell you, you're, you're my bitch. 
All right? And that dude over there is my bitch. I paid $7 billion. I wanted to wear you wear a fucking tutu and run around Microsoft headquarters handing out Game Pass subscriptions. Get the fuck over there. You're my bitch now. You're Phil Spencer's bitch. That's what Phil needed to do. Instead, Phil goes over there. They, they, they rub each other's asses. And they go, oh. High five. High five. Oh, I got to call Sony. We might put games over. You, and I remember. Jay, do you remember? Friggin' before the deal was done, remember they're like, oh, well, Phil's not going to confirm the exclusivity until yep. the ink is signed. Until, yep. until he signs in blood, like a fucking wrestling contract. Like when they come out to the ring and they sign the contract, we were waiting mm-hmm. for that day. And then they do it and they do the circle jerk and he's still vague. Yeah. He still didn't confirm Starfield. That's, this yeah, is what I mean. But, Jez, here's the thing. This whole generation, that's how it's going to be. It is. It's it's horseshit. It's going to forever be like this. Yeah. That's just, I hate to say it. That's how it's going to be. Insomniac says never. Yeah. How long till, remember, because you remember Spider-Man, dudes, they thought that that was just a sign time that there's no way Sony will keep Spider-Man. Spider-Man is going to be on Xbox. This is a, this is a brand that, you know, there's no way. In 2018, what happened? Sonic never. In April 3rd, 2018, well, you guess what? Do you think there were more podcasts after April, like in June and July, going, I think spider Man's going to come to Xbox? I, you want to know what? No, because it was done. Never. Yeah. Done. Move on. That's what Phil needed well, to do. We it's the track record, right? It's the track record. No, Phil has a crazy track record, right? He comes out. He spits these lies. He comes out at E3. This is the best oh, shit. Uh, lineup this ever. Quote, and... Be bold. and uh, This is the best E3, best lineup ever. We're going to be huge, massive. Yeah. Talking about and What he's talking about is the bullshit that's going to spew. He's like, this is going to be the biggest E3 ever. Yeah, the biggest E3 of bullshit. Yeah. Yep. But the, the thing is, is that just come out and confirm exclusivity. Stop being kumbaya. Stop roasting marshmallows. Take your marshmallows and your chocolate and your graham crackers. Piss on the fireplace and get the fuck home. These are your games. You bought them. They own you. Todd Howard, your bitch. Put them in the tutu. Have them on the corner having out fucking Game Pass things and make Starfield the exclusive. Confirm it. Don't let the media question. Don't let other people question. This is not their show. This is your brand, your console. What are you afraid of? And this is why I said it needs to be an exclusive and it should have been confirmed back in March. Um, again, just look at the uh, being apprehensive about saying what's exclusive and what's not. Yeah, why they they're very vague, and and that's why. And this is why people con- will continue to have that. Will this be exclusive? Will it really be truly exclusive or time exclusive? Oh yeah, or you're in the time exclusive. Are they just right. going going smoke? And then so, uh, what's going to happen is the bots are going to start saying, "Well, he he didn't really say." exclusive exclusive he really meant timed exclusives and it doesn't matter and you know the whole stuff i remember with the xbox one x came out they did that little montage video came out saying the finest pixels um they they said the the, the fastest frames the, the <laughs> highest resolution oh the fattest I mean, they, pixels they out, out. The yeah I mean, they, I mean listen they came out with this whole spiel right um made you think that this is just going to be ground changing uh 4k 60 no compromises i mean they oh, they literally Jesus. said that in their videos right and then like the fucking first game they had released was fucking PUBG. oh running my god PUBG. A second yeah oh, they're running around with a flying pan holy shit you know on the on the world's most powerful console and have you noticed they stopped talking about power now Oh, is yeah. they no longer advertise the world's most powerful console? They no longer advertise the T flops or none of the shit. No, you haven't heard movies. anything. You're right. They have not. I'm telling you, they have not. Phil, Aaron, none of them have really. The yeah. way they hyped up last year of the hardware, yeah. it died, yeah. dude. It shows you it, it was did. just a yeah. PR stunt. That's yeah. the thing. They're so disconnected, yet they're so. My problem I have is, and this is, I remember when. You know, I appreciated like what Major Nelson did for Xbox during the 360 era. I listened to his podcast, yeah. hearing that stuff. And the thing is, is that they give you a face to go with a product. And that's that's creative yeah, that's marketing, right? Much, yeah. The problem that I have is now 
they have two they have a lot of faces now but the problem is that the face became the console and not the output of the console absolutely and that's the problem absolutely. i have it's like those guys it's great to have that community it's great that they're in touch but what it makes it even more of a head scratcher is that how do they let things come out like craig like halo like that xbox live doubling its price if you're so in touch with your audience going on podcasts being in party chats, having inside sources, giving people breaks, taking them out to dinner, doing meeting them at E3, doing all these conversations and doing all that stuff where you're supposedly in touch with the gamer. How are you so out of touch with your product? It, it, it goes back to what the other Jazz said, Jazz Court. <laughs> uh, I be I shared his video a lot because he said it. He said he just his fear is, and, and what he thinks is just. Microsoft doesn't really like they're just a bunch of suits yeah. behind a product. They they have no emotional connection or artistic connection to gaming. They're just they're, they're just there to sell a just another product. Yeah. These are just random robots, right? Businessmen that they don't they don't get gamers. They don't get the artistry of games and everything else, you know? Exactly. Yeah, Ryan says uh, Sarah Bond should run Xbox. I believe her. Yeah, you know what? I won't mind. <laughs> get that Phil Ness out of there. Get some Sarah Ness in there. Well, Ooh, here's yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you think about this too? Because you gotta you gotta think about it this way. It's there, Microsoft has crossed the point of no return. Right? I know. They've dug they're, their they're grave. Too, too. Yeah, they they dug their grave. That's kind of I hate to say it. It's it. It's, they're gonna. It takes a. It's gonna take a Game, lot for them to get out. Listen, they threw the console under the bus. For what? At the at the expense of of a service. Yeah. So it's all about Game Pass. It's all about that service. It's no longer about the games. It's no longer about um, the console. Yeah. So. I, you know, it's I hate it is what it is, man, and and if Game Pass isn't don't turn out to be successful for them, and I mean real success, not none of this Twitter and this fake hype. Yeah, this fake. Yeah, the one dollar Game Apple. Pass. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, we got you know twenty thousand subs. Because let's face it, we all know that it's not concurrent subs, right? Those are well, yeah, subs. just like Sea of Thieves has like eight million people, but no, yeah, it's like eight million they, people played in the last five years. Exactly, but they swear up and down. Oh, we got twelve thousand people playing. It's just amazing. <laughs> but you know, but they they'll never put the real stuff out there. And, and a lot of the real stuff actually came out with this court case from Epic and yes. Apple, yeah. Such as the Xbox One console sales sitting at forty eight point two million units. Yeah, right. For- so I mean, we all kind of figured there was somewhere around a forty mark, maybe fifty. Uh, some, but the bots were trying to push it closer to sixty. So I say, okay, cool. Well, now we know why they wouldn't fucking give sales. That's abysmal, especially because that's less than half than what they sold the previous generation. Exactly. Well, not only that, they said that they projected to sell two hundred million Xbox mm, Ones. Yeah. Right. So shit. I mean, dude, it's, it's they, you really missed the mark on they that. They did, right? and that's why they're trying this whole like PC. Uh, you see some of yeah. the people like you know PC and and Xbox. They think PC is going to save them. They it's think not. PC is going to save. It's them. not. And this is the actual point. That's funny. Is yeah. that uh, just to bring up exactly this is what I want to talk about? What you said about Game Passes, and and yeah. you know, not to again, just because Grub put, tweeted out his article right about you know Microsoft's going to lose money. Uh, that PlayStation owners, but it's likely to see that money at the cost of marketing Game Pass. And the whole thread is about how Game Pass, and you know, Jeff says here, put another yeah. way, your first $15 a month payment is worth more to Microsoft than the $60, $70. So this is what he's saying, right? So I think this is a lot of stuff that he's using in his call about why Starfield is going to be exclusive and why yeah. this is a Game Pass driver. So Benji Sales, who's an awesome guy too, you know, he writes some stuff and he talks about a lot of the sales. And he goes here, at the end of the day, the future of Xbox business is tied intrinsically to the growth of Game Pass. As yeah. we've seen with subscription platforms and other media, exclusive content is the strongest driver of new subscription subscriber yeah. acquisition. So here comes Grinds. Here I come, right? Here I come, strolling around Twitter, and I go like this. Then why is there an option to buy the game on Steam? Absolutely. Yes, Game Pass would be the market mostly for console, but on console, PC, yeah. most likely a majority will buy it on Steam. 
and not mm-hmm. go to the Microsoft Game Pass route similar to Microsoft other game releases. Sea of Thieves Absolutely. blew up when it was on sale on Steam. It was in Game Pass on the Xbox Store for three years before that, and it blew Absolutely. up on Steam. Why is that? Because people don't... First off, they hate yeah. the Windows 10 Store. Secondly, mm-hmm. they're not subscribing to play their games. And I said this before, that this has nothing to do with PlayStation or Nintendo. Microsoft has its own internal battle to convince J-Dubs and all their other... and everybody else, and me... Mm-hmm. Don't buy your game, subscribe. Mm-hmm. Don't buy Starfield, get it in Game Pass. Don't buy Halo, get it in Game Pass. Don't yeah. pay for your game, just subscribe. That is an internal shift that Microsoft's gonna have to deal with with all their 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 employee, like all their their contributors, all the people that play yeah. games on their system. They're gonna have to convince you to not subscribe, not buy, but subscribe, and. Yeah. You're seeing that migration very slowly because you had a lot of people when they try to double Xbox Game Pass, uh, Xbox Live, complain. And I think they weren't ready for that because they thought that people would just go to Game Pass naturally. But you got a lot of people out there that just want to play and buy their games, subscribe to play online and play their games. They want to buy their Call of Duty and call it a day. They don't want to subscribe to 200 games. They have no clue what's coming. They don't want to do that. And that's a battle that Microsoft has to fight itself. Well, uh, as well, to add on to that, the reason why people don't want to buy into the whole Game Pass thing is, for one, 99.9% of those games that are there, the people have already Already played played, the previous generations, right? Mm -hmm. So those one or two games that they dropped recently, remember, those games come and they go away after uh, like a month or so. After a certain amount of time, they go away. So you've invested all this time into this thing and this game go away. Now, guess what? You still have to spend money to buy that game. So that's a, thing. It's a double dip. Yeah. Um, that's what they want. Yeah. They want you to Listen, buy MLB the game MLB is pass. going away. MLB yeah. They want is you to subscribe going to away. play and then buy it. Right. So you're basically double yeah. dipping in these games. Absolutely. You're basically doing the whole uh, game fly and then saying, I'll keep the yes. game. And then basically you pay the rest of the money. So they get, Absolutely. not only do they get you from paying the subscription, but then they, but they also get, get the you full price for buying the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, even if it's a, even if it's a 10% discount. Oh, MLB is not on discount. I see people asking. It's not. Yeah. Remember, yeah. it's only select games that are on discount. They're yes, usually when absolutely. they're leaving and it depends. So it's not yeah. a, a guaranteed discount. The other yeah. thing is, is that, so I kept pushing this, and you could see the damaging. This guy Joe, who always he always he's he's he. This guy is a troll anyway. He goes, Microsoft's fine with that though. They have a good relationship with Steam, dude. That has no that has no point. Listen to what the hell I'm talking Microsoft, about. Microsoft, trust me, they Microsoft have don't want. Microsoft no, don't, don't want, want to pay that 30, that 30, 40 percent exactly. tax that they pay on that. So way they would rather it. for you to buy it in their store. That way they get 100 percent. Exactly. So, Jay, I go the next level. Exactly. Yeah. The thing is, if this really if this seven billion dollar deal, as all these people are saying, pa- oh, Paris is here. You know, it's all about getting you to subscribe to Game Pass. So guess what? I take all you people that say this thing about Game Pass, Paris, Jeff, Benji, this is all about Game Pass. So why don't you not only take Starfield and make it exclusive, but only make it available in Game Pass? Yeah. That's it. So I say, still, Steam takes away from Game Pass. So why doesn't you, if you want, if this is all about growing your subscribers, having the game on Steam doesn't help you. Yeah, that takes it away. Take Starfield and go all in. If Game Pass is so important, as these people are saying on Twitter, all these people that love Game Pass, cap for it every day, then make Starfield only playable on Xbox and PC Game Pass. Make it only in the Windows 10 store and make it only on this. If Game Pass is growing, like they say, and Game Pass makes you buy more, as Phil used to say, and all these positive things that people tell you about Game Pass... Then put your balls where your mouth is. Put Starfield not only exclusive, put it exclusively in Game Pass. You only could play it if you subscribe. You want to know what? Let me ask you a question, Jay. Uh-huh. HBO Max, right? Absolutely. We all watched the Mortal Kombat movie. Yes. Can you buy it? Nope. Can I purchase it digitally? Nope, not that I know of. 
you have to subscribe to watch it. You have to subscribe. Godzilla. That's that incentive. Did I have? Can God's... I buy it? Nope. No. I, it was only there for a month. Yep. You had to subscribe yep. to HBO too. Let me ask you another question. The mm-hmm. Netflix of games, grinders. The Netflix of games. What Game Pass is? When Stranger Things season two came out, could you buy it on DVD and Blu-ray day and date at Best Buy? Nope. No, you had to subscribe to Netflix to watch Stranger Things too. WandaVision, I could buy the DVD collection, the Blu-ray collection, 4K, day one for WandaVision. No, you can't. You had to subscribe to Disney Plus to watch it. These were exclusive to the subscription. You couldn't buy these movies. You want to compare Game Pass to movies? Well, you don't have to buy them. Now, I can understand if you want to buy it within the system... Fine, but I would say if this is so important to Game Pass, and this is the Game Pass subscriptions, like Jeff Grubb says, the Game Pass subscriptions are more important than the sixty and seventy dollars that you need to spend. Why don't you just take Starfield and put it in Game Pass? Yeah, that will grow numbers, don't you think, Jay? That will grow it. It will. But and if and if it's what? all the shit that they say it is, it, there should be no problem, right? Microsoft Absolutely. losing money. It makes you buy the game, let you try it out, more people to play the game. So how do you succeed in growing Game Pass numbers when I could buy the game on Steam? Well, to 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 place if to place this even more, right? Halo Master Chief Collection was on Xbox for years. Mm-hmm. It finally went to PC and it had like I think eight million to ten million people mm-hmm. actually bought the game. People will buy games. People are apprehensive about services unless you give them something exclusive. Mm-hmm. That's just, it is what it is. Um, it's all smoke and mirrors. And again, it's at the cost of the Xbox console itself. Exactly. Because now people see less and less of a reason to own the console. So your numbers are dwindling from the console. And you got to realize, people say, oh, you know, Sony's games sell 20, you know, they have a bunch of games that sell 20 million plus copies. Yeah, they had, but they had also had a big install base. The more install base you have, the higher the chance of people going to buy said game, the higher chance of them going to, um, you know, play the game supported by the service, um, PlayStation Plus and stuff like that. So it's a ripple effect. But when you have a small install base, you basically, it's hard for you to get any of that. Yeah. That, and that's exactly. where Microsoft is. That's where they are. And, and they're that's, trying to... But, Jay, doesn't that counter, yeah. though, like the whole thing where Game Pass gets pe- more people to buy their yes. games? Then, yes. wa- then then Game Pass should be self-sustainable. Then you should be able to put a game like Starfield in Game Pass day and date, just mm-hmm. like you promised, and that's it. And that should be able to sustain you just like all everybody who's capping all over for Game Pass is the future. Well, there's your future. The fact that you could buy this game on Steam is a head scratcher to me when everybody's like, game, this game has to be an exclusive for Xbox and PC. Okay, because this is all about Game Pass. But they forget the part that you could just buy the game without subscribing on Steam. Yeah, and, and guess day. what? Microsoft has to play a royalty for that game for you to purchase on Steam. And if you don't think people are doing that, go look at how Microsoft you you touted how Microsoft sold so many games. They're number one sellers on Steam. It's incredible. Yeah, because people are not going to that Windows 10 store because it's garbage. Microsoft's still too late to fix that. And secondly, yeah. you gotta nobody's gonna buy their game in there. None. They're not gonna subscribe. That's the thing. You got to tell somebody to subscribe to play that game. So that's why when everybody's like, this is a Game Pass move, if it really was, then you put that game exclusively in the service and you let it ride and you see how Game Pass grows. That's a true testament if you really is this about Game Pass. But my guess is I don't think Game Pass has the numbers to even warrant. They would be they would lose too much money. So what they got to do is do the experiment of Game Pass because it's still a fucking experiment. No matter what somebody tells you, it's the future. Yeah, it is. It's an experiment. Yeah. And they got to make sure they get some money on the back end and have that game go on Steam. That's their fail safe. 
Hell, yeah. it would be a fail safe if they put it on the other consoles as well. That's their fail yep. safe because they got to make their <coughs> money to warrant the development of this because Microsoft is going to lose money either way. It's about how much money they're going to lose. Satya might be like, hey, Phil, okay, you could take a 50% cut. Don't put it on PlayStation. Put it on Steam. But Phil's like, hey, you know, let's put it all in Game Pass. And then Satya's like, oh, fuck. You mean we're going to lose like 80% of the, 90% of the budget on this game? Like, you know, by well, having subscribers? Don't do it, you know? Let me let me say this, Jazz. Let's say in a perfect world, right? Game Pass start to get a lot of subs. Let's say that, you know, the next time they, they top the numbers, let's say it's at 40, 50 million. Sure. Right? Let's say it's, it, it's, it's all to the good. Who's to say, in order for Game Pass to be sustainable, you have to have good games to keep people involved, right? If not, people are going to cancel their subscriptions. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. None of the games that Microsoft have uh, or that's coming are guaranteed to be hits. Exactly. We can assume that Forza is going to be okay, right? Because they have a track record of it being pretty good, uh, at least the motorsports. I mean, the, uh, the the Horizon series, not the motorsports. Yeah. Um, the next gears, right? And and but that shit is so far, you know, so far down the road. That's years away. So, what in the short term is going to be able to sustain it? I don't know. Like, what, 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 what games are going to be able to to sustain it? Right? Yeah, I don't. Um, dude, I don't even know what what they can. I I don't know. Like, that's the thing. Like, you I say, mean, let's, let's 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 go over some of the games. Like, okay, you got Starfield, right? Yeah, I hope that knocks it out the park. I hope it's a ninety some rated game, but let's face it, a lot of these Bethesda games have been low rated trash, right? Um, so they're off and on. Yeah. Um, so we don't know. You know, we we don't know. Uh, I just don't know what what else are or is Microsoft going to release? I know these guys, these fanboys, the Xbox fans, they make this these special lists with all of these Dude, games. That, potential- that's another thing that I'm just like, I don't understand why, like, they do this stuff, and it's like, why isn't Microsoft doing this stuff? It's their product. They, yeah. why aren't they making this roadmap? People make, and, and the thing is, is that that's where Microsoft is never going to succeed because the hype and the the anticipation yeah. is beyond the, what people are creating because Microsoft is not getting in front of it. They're not yeah. getting in front of this thing. They're not being bold. They're not being they're not being confident. You know, yeah. they're they're being wishy washy. They're being they're apologizing all the time. You even see how they communicate in those documents from Epic. Mm-hmm. Oh, we would like to work with you. You know, and even there he confirmed that Game Pass, I'm still gonna try putting it on other platforms like Please, you suggest. Yeah, exactly. Like such a soft manager, yep. a yep. soft leader. Meanwhile, yeah. Sony's like how are you paying us, bitch, to have somebody play my skin on another platform? Exactly. And Epic's like, oh shit, we, uh, you know, we'll try to make it work for you, Sony. Please, yeah. uh, we'll make you look the best. We're so- like, I went over those yeah. vi- those emails, and you could see, yeah, soft come, come on, versus come on, confident. Come, exactly. Do it. We'll 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 have some some VR games ready for you. Yeah. Whenever we'll, you're. Re- yeah, exactly. They're like kissing their <laughs> ass. Like, we'll we'll make you look good. We'll announce it together. This will be a great opportunity for you. Please really Listen. consider. And Sony's like. Oh yeah. no, bitch! I'll get back to you. <laughs> exactly. When you're the king, you you know you get that royal, chair, that man. royal. It yeah, that like, royal treatment. I would love to work with you sometime in the future. Like we really are trying to get Game Pass on other platforms. We'll try. We'll we'll get there. Yeah. Like I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah. You are the head. All got all this money, and yeah. you got all this. Stu- That's why I'm saying, like, is that how you walk into your studios when you walk into to three four three and they're sitting there they eating brunch and, and hard boiled eggs and you're like, guys, please yeah. do a good job. I please, I I hope it looks good. Thanks, guys. See you later. You could take a three day weekend this weekend. You all worked really hard. All right, uh, pass me that mimosa. Yeah. Like they're, they're all they're always having these latte breaks. Right? Oh, God. they're always vacationing and seem to be lounging around Dude, and happy. What are you and, doing? You got and, shit but to their do. Their product, man. their product looked like they. May, may just, maybe that's the problem. Maybe gamers wanted more than the actual guys who were fucking making the games, mm. right? 
Or, or, or a, the gamers care more than the people possibly. Because remember, they're contracting a lot of yeah. people out. And they might say, I yell, like I, I made the joke about Tony, who yeah. was hired to uh, to draw all the hairs on Craig, and they're waiting on him. You know, yeah. they just brought somebody in saying, hey, you do this. And, and you know, and, and again, I don't want to take away from the devs and stuff like that. I don't think yeah. it's them. I think it's their management. I You know who I want to do? I want to um, know where the hell is that dirty, stinky-ass booty. Yeah, Phil booty got is. his booty, and he hides it in the closet. I don't know why booty is not... I still don't understand why Phil is still talking about games. Booty should be out there talking about his studios, talking about his games. Not Phil. Phil loves the limelight, but Phil needs to go to fuck away and let yeah. Booty talk about what his studios are working on. Don't have Phil talking about all horse shit. Booty needs to be out there clapping with his brother Harry Booty, and they both got to be out there fucking talking. But yeah. Phil is always the one that's like, Booty, you, you sit back there. You know, I, I like to do this interview because Phil thinks he's a movie star, and yeah. that's the problem. The problem is, is that you think you're better than the product that you're selling and people are yeah. buying you rather than the product. And the problem is, is that that can only go so far. And you see 48 million, 42 million. The thing is, is that the gamers are going to catch on and you're telling me in 2023, you know what? Nobody's going to be fucking around in 2023. Yeah. They're all going to be on a switch pro. They're going to be on a PlayStation five. Because Sony and Nintendo are not going to stop. And what are you going to do? Guys, see, we told you three years ago we were ready. And now here's Fable. And what happens if Fable comes out and it's like episodic? Well, 75, Which... we're going to add more seasons later. Oh, yeah. you imagine that shit? They're talking about these games coming out and yeah. being a hit day one. What Returnal did, no, yeah. not a lot of companies can do. And guess what? You don't need, you need what Returnal did. You need what Last of Us did times yes. five. Yes, 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 absolutely. Every single one of them. I'm talking Perfect Dark. I'm talking Fable. I'm talking Halo. I'm talking Gears. I'm talking Compulsion uh, to Hellblade 2. Every single one of them needs to come out and do. They got to be the best of the best because guess why? You're waiting the longest for this stuff. There's no excuses. It's not like Microsoft stacking a deck with all these amazing games, and these are just like uh, accessories. Like, oh well, you know, we could have a bad one. We could have a Destruction All Stars. Well, guess what? Sony got a Destruction All Stars. Next one up, Returnal. Get the fuck in here. Yeah. Yo, seventy, whatever, sixty. Okay, good. You could have flops, but guess what? When all you're dropping are flops, and that's not T flops. That's the problem. Listen, and, when, yeah, when, Jizz, when you trying something new, right? Something never been done before. Like I kind of applaud uh, Dead Stranding. It was something that we never seen yeah. before. It was something it different. It did right? something different, and you give it a pass it, for doing something you, different. You, exactly. But when you do this, Halo, Gears, and Forza, look and look at Halo, your franchise game. Your that is your The Last of Us. Um, to you, yeah. to you, and to your to your company, and that motherfucker came out looking like fucking Bob oh, the man. Builder. Um, <laughs> developed it. That's a problem. That's a problem. Who is going to these studios and playing these games and say yes or no? Phil, like supposedly, somebody... he played Crackdown. He oh, thought that was God. sufficient. Well, that well, I question his integrity because now it's like he played Crackdown does he, three. Does, does he know what a fucking good game is? Now I got to question it. But like, Jay, let me ask you even a better question. Do they even care what a good game is? Because guess what? They got your subscriber so. money. Do you give us? Do they care if this game yeah. is going to drop? With Whether a it's good or not, they don't care. Because How? They got, your, they got your money already. Absolutely. They're That's getting you $15 the problem, a month. They don't have to sell your product because guess what? You already bought the product. It's called Game Pass. All they're going to do is supply you with a new icon in there. So do they really got to go out of their way? Look at look at how they marketed Gears 5. It's in Game Pass. It's in Game Pass. Not necessarily the game. The marketing of Gears 4 versus Gears 5, totally different. Gears 4 was like, the, like a traditional game yeah. marketing. Yeah. Gears 5 was like big Game Pass sign and it got a little icon. Gears 5 is here. Yeah. That's the thing. So moving forward, does Microsoft really need to go and say Metacritic 90 or bust? No. Those honestly, guys are getting bonuses anyway. Honestly, you're absolutely right. I don't think they care about Metacritic no. because their fan base doesn't seem to care about Metacritic. Well. They get those 
I just think they don't dose, care because right? they don't have to care. They don't have to sell you a product. See if yeah. Thieves shipped for 60 bucks. Yeah. Did they care that they sold it? No. But instead yeah. what they said was like, and then they could even be like, well, guess what, guys? Yeah, it'll be a 70 at launch. Like Halo might be a, a, a 60, a, a 75, a 80 at launch. We'll get to uh, we'll get there over three years yeah. of content and content drops and we hear you, you know, and that's the marketing that they're playing. That's why I always had a yeah. problem. Microsoft believes a service game is a skeleton of a game that they add content later. A service game, you want to know what a service game is? Go to Tsushima. Yeah. You give me yeah. an amazing single player game and then you ta- then you put a, a huge capable multiplayer on top of it. That is yeah. more of a service because you gave me something more than my than my interest. You didn't give me a sixty dollar three missions of Sea of Thieves and tell me, you know, uh yeah. yeah. Kraken still body's not there. All the twelve teraflops, they still got five C dicks flapping in the wind. They don't have the body either. With all those teraflops, you'd think the fuckers will draw the goddamn body of the Kraken knowing that people joke about it all over the internet. Just draw the fucking body and make it an update. No, you're right. You got 12 T-flops, give the Kraken his body. Nope. The thing is, is like I just don't get it. But you'll make refrigerators, though, as a meme. We'll make Xbox refrigerators, though, because laugh at us, not with us. Well, and Jess, here's the thing, right? These guys can make the shit out of some fucking controllers. Oh my god. Their controllers excel. They can crank out controllers like nobody's business. <laughs> but they can't fuck. I mean, they just they can't put out. Hey, not only do they they, they they make controllers, they even have an app that you can make the controller. That's where that shit should have ended. You didn't yeah. have to come out with Midnight Blue and Sneaker yeah. White and all this other shit. You could have just made a website where I could make the controllers like you have. And guess and what? Then, Wouldn't this be a shocker? Why don't you add game customization to it maybe give me yeah. halo uh icons that i could put on my controller maybe give me cool uh you know sea of thieves kind of old logos and shit just make people make their controller why do you need to come out with electric blue i can make electric blue yeah this that's even worse like not only do they come out with custom controllers but not only do they make controls but then you could customize them as well like it's it's doubling down on the same thing yeah. You know, and they never embrace a game with a controller. Like they very, they yeah. did it with Halo Five, mm-hmm. and the gear. Like, like how do you yeah. have these big games on? Like the medium should. Have, and then, on top of that, they show custom consoles and custom controls. But you got to win them with a a Twitter retweet or uh, thing. Yeah, you don't make them s- sellable. People would buy yeah, that no, stuff, which is crazy because I would buy those. I things. would. Some of those things. Some of those look things. Amazing. I know, and the thing is, is like make the controls about a goddamn game rather than just like the white and blues and blacks and yellows and 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 just like make it about a game. Like I just don't, I, I don't understand. Again, their connect, their disconnect with this stuff. But again, the 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 main point is, is that they need to get in front of this because the thing is, is that the longer they wait on stuff the more anticipation is going to grow and the difference is is that when sony was quiet you heard people rumbling going fire jim ryan sony doesn't know what they're doing and stuff and then guess what returnal ratchet and clank all those bitches put their head in the sand right now nobody's talking about fire jim ryan right now this guy's cooking with oil when you when you release good games can't argue you will it. silence the critics exactly you will silence the critics you cannot argue a great game that's the thing like her like you don't see a lot of trolling with horizon forza horizon 3 yeah. you know like it's a great game like it's yeah. it's it's a great game yeah it's a racing game and all you could say is that's not for me yeah. But you can't go like, oh, look, Craig's and stuff. You can't make fun of a good game. Like, that's it. You could just say, hey, yeah. it's not for me because guess it's, what? It's, it's, it's fun, it's fun proof. It. Like, it, it's, it's, exactly. it's hater proof. You know? Like, no, if somebody could look at Ratchet and go like, you know, that's just not for me. That's fine. Uh, but nobody's yeah. going to look at Ratchet and go, that was like shit. That's bullshit. Because people will be like, you are. Like, where the hell are you from? Exactly. And that's why you Trust can't me, argue dudes, a great game. Dudes try. You, know, you got some bots out here trying. Oh, they will, but the thing is, is that they don't look legit because they yeah. are, and that's the thing. Like, and that's where when you look at something where there's a universal acceptance to something, social media, media wise, and there's like an acceptance to it. If you go against that acceptance, you may be putting, you might look and show your bias, or just show that you have no clue what the hell you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And that's where 
when you have a great game, there's less of that. Like somebody, if you come out and say Zelda sucks, I hate Zeldas and stuff like that, people will be like, oh, excuse, you're not a gamer. Like, what the hell's wrong with yeah. you? Not one Zelda do you like? But if you can say, hey, Zelda's just not for me, that's fine. But if yeah. you come out and troll Zelda and just be like, it sucks, like you take these games and, and just kind of trash them, any kind of, you know, following or clout that you want to establish or anything you want to establish, you lose credibility because people are going to be like, well, how can you not acknowledge that that is a good game? Yeah. And you can only do that when it's a good game. That's why the only way Microsoft's going to combat this is with Last of Us type games. That's why when people already, I hear some people going, oh, you know, that's why they're all hyping Starfield because they, they're not, they're nervous about Halo, Jay. Yeah. Then yeah. they know that Halo oh, yeah, might they, not they, be what listen, it is. They've moved on. They've yeah, moved that's on. what they're like, Starfield, Starfield, Starfield. You know, shout out to Smooth. I heard him on the thing with Dustin Laguerre. And he was just like, oh, no, it can't just be Halo this fall. And I'm like, why? That was all Microsoft had was yeah. Halo. What do you mean? Oh, it has to be Halo and yeah. Starfield. That's the... Why? Yeah. Like, the thing is, is, like, Halo should be enough. Like, Halo is the, the game. And, and the thing is, is that that proves that Microsoft has yet to really establish Halo as a game that people could really want. People are just like, oh, it looks all right. Well, like, in, in, in this day and age, because Halo is old in the tooth, it's long in the tooth, and let's face it, there's bigger and better shooters out there. That so they again, when you keep cranking out the same IP over and over for twenty years, Oof. you're gonna, I mean, pe- people are gonna leave you behind. That's what happened. This is a whole new generation of gamers. Some don't even know what the hell a halo is, you know? <laughs> well, that's and that's another issue, you know? It's like, it, it, the thing is, is that they're trying to make this a reboot. And I was listening to, who was it? Uh, was it, was it, was it Crap Game? There was, somebody was saying something. I, I was listening to somebody, know, like, you know, no, it actually, it was, uh, it was one of the, um, one of the other, like, you know, media podcasts, and they were just saying, like, mm-hmm. Halo really needs to do... Oh, actually, I was listening to that X Factor podcast thing, you know, and they were saying... And, mm-hmm. and actually, it's funny, Paris said this. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. He was saying that Halo needs to... They need to do with Halo like they did with God of War. Like, they need to kind of, like, you know... Oh, no, actually, it wasn't Paris. It was the guy who they were talking about who... Actually, he worked... Or something with Halo Five, like consultant, one of the guys on that X Factor podcast, and what he uh-huh. said was, was like there's so much lore to Halo that you're gonna have to find a way to kind of show some of it, but not be reliant that people have followed this lore for all this amount of time, who the flood are, all this stuff. But you're gonna have to find a way to kind of get people involved quickly. Without having them saying that they had to read all the books or watch all the movies and stuff. Because Halo's lore is so deep that you're going to have to find a way to, to bring people in. And I and first off, I already see them failing on that because guess what? They're bringing that brute army back with Atriox and his brothers and shit. That's assuming you played Halo Wars 2, which is probably the least thing anybody else played. Because it wasn't a real Halo game. It was a, it was a top-down strategy game. So... Atri- everybody's like Atriox oh my god Atriox it's like that sucks they shouldn't be using Atriox because that assumes that you know his whole brute army story and they're already failing with that because they're assuming that you know where these brutes came from this reckless Ruka brutes from Atriox's group in Halo Wars 2 which wasn't even a first person shooter so you're already kind of losing they're already going against what that guy suggested on that podcast was that you're going into some lore that people never even played that game before. Mm-hmm. So, like, how are you going to get people interested? God of War did a great job because they started with a whole new realm. Uh, and, and, and actually, there's old basis. Like, everybody knows Thor and Zeus and, and you know, that kind yeah. of lore. So you just got them dealing with other gods. But it's just incredible what they did with that. And then, you know what's funny, too? I think they're doing the same thing with Ratchet and Clank because I never played all these Ratchet and Clanks. Like I'm, I'm, a, I, I never played it. I played the remake, but I'm really yeah. not invested in that character. But watching, you know, watching that stuff and then Im- them introducing Rivet, like a new character to it, it kind of yeah. gives you something new and refreshing to kind of to to go to. You don't need to know the history of them. Now I'm saying that their law is nowhere near Halo's law, but the thing yeah. is, is like you want to try to bring people on, and I thought. And I just think Sony does an impeccable job, 
You know, and this is not capping. Sony does well, an incredible uh, job of telling the story of yeah, a game before the it releases. Yeah. Days Gone was a perfect example of that. Days Gone, they Absolutely. did a great job marketing that game to let you yeah. know who these characters are. Well, but, sorry, what were you going to say? It, it just goes back to um, Sony being a master of their craft, Nintendo being a master of their craft. Yeah. Sony's been into games. Nintendo's for gameplay. Years. They'll show you that fun gameplay. Story wise, Nintendo is like, hey, they stole the princess again. She's She just can't yeah. keep a, her feet down on the thing. It got stolen again. But, like, this Nintendo knows how to show you with, like, their gameplay tweaks, like when they did Luigi's Mansion and stuff like that, yes. too. They yes. show like, oh, wow, I could do that now with this. Oh, wow, he could slam them. He could do this. Nintendo knows how to show. But both of them do excellent jobs marketing their games, getting gamers excited as to what they want to see and what's going to be attention grabbing. That's yeah. the problem that Microsoft has. Like, they really don't well, do good demonstrations of their games. Their, their models, their <laughs> models different, though. It's, it's, games first right they they come in with a games first model microsoft hasn't yet they they haven't how should i say it they haven't kind of created that zone they've only ever stepped out three times and that's what halo gives and forza they've never stepped out and tried anything else that's the mm -hmm. problem whereas nintendo i mean they, they nintendo and sony have a bunch of ip they, they're constantly making new IP, whether it works or not, they try. Um, so, I mean, Microsoft has its its work cut out for them. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't see them in gaming for long. I, mm. I don't. I think they 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 have enough IPs and enough... Uh, we, we... It's a lot of management of studios, though, man. It's a lot of management of, like, you're taking 23, yeah. 23 studios. Matt Booty has to cover yeah. all that stuff. And, yeah. again, like, where are we with Hellblade 2? Like, and that's the thing. Like, they don't tell a good story where – and no, it's funny. They used to do this. Like, they used to show the trailers and then show gameplay and release it. They were, that was their cadence. Like, you would see it at 1E3, you would see the gameplay at the next E3, and then they would release it. They had such a cadence. Every yeah. like at their E3s, that's why that's why it's so frustrating. Why I go on these rants is because they were doing everything that we're saying they were doing. Yes, they might not have been as successful as the PlayStation Four, but they still were applicable. That they were bringing out games, Sunset Overdrive. You saw the trailer, you saw the gameplay. They released the game. Hey, uh, you know, uh, Titanfall. They showed the trailer. They released the game. They they showed Rise. They released the game. Like they yeah. were doing all this prior to 2016. Then all of a sudden they went at they went in, they they just went into hiatus. And when I hear people going, well, it takes time, two to three years. I'm like, that was in 2018. We're in two to three years. Four to exactly. five years. I meant. Um. Well. We're celebrating 20 years of Xbox right now. They didn't yeah. start in 2017. Well, well, all they do is blame uh, blame uh, Terry oh, Myerson. And Ter oh, yeah, Terry Myerson. Yeah, it's Terry Myerson. Right. When Terry Myerson was there, when when everybody else was there, we got games. All right? Yep. The only time we're not getting the games, the first-party content, which is the most Phil important, Spencer. Phil Ness Spencer. Like, yep. was, that's the only person. Preview. Robbie Bach, we had games. Yep. Ed Freeze, Peter we Moore. had games. Peter Moore, we had games. We had exclusive yep. partnerships with GTA, Final Fantasy on stage, day yep. and date games. They work so hard. New games, like 1 versus 100. You know what yep. I ask you? What happened to Killer Instinct? Where did those yep. guys go? Creative Assembly, wh wh whoever, where's Killer Instinct? What happened to that? They stopped at That's season crazy. three. That's crazy. Yep. That's crazy. Where is it? What happened to what happened to the, those games? Like, you know, they built a studio from the ground up to make Perfect Dark, which I'm still I love Perfect Dark, but um, I just think it's kind of weird that you built this ragtag group of people to make Perfect Dark when you had no no incentive or lead lead like any kind of hype towards bringing back Joanna Dark at all. You didn't make a spinoff game. You didn't even friggin' fully remaster or remake their first Perfect Dark. Even the one you for the 360. Redo it. Relaunch it with the Series X. Make it come out with, with like, build up the IP. You just say, hey, perfect talk. It's like, uh, and it's coming just years from now. Nobody remembers. Nobody remembers perfect that. Perfect dark, bro. Like, it's, especially this new generation. No. That was, the, who? That shit was old. It is old. It was a yeah. Nintendo 64 game. 
Exactly. For and then came reason, out man, as a 360 I... launch title. Like these people, yeah. some of them weren't born yet. Exactly. So bring it back. Like that's what I mean. That's like if you're gonna really bring back that franchise and you bought this group Santa Monica, I see them on the beach, photos, oh, look at the sunset. Oh you paid all that money yep. for that group and bringing all that talent to make perfect dark. Well, why haven't you even in, kind of led this up or even yep. plan on bringing this up? And that's the thing. One Another point, the last point, I'm going to go on all freaking night. But one of the last points, the, the points I want to make is when talking about exclusives, when Sony did not have to buy Bethesda to get Tokyo and yep. Deathloop. Yep. They didn't spend no seven billion dollars to make those games exclusive. And guess what? There's no Jeff Grubb that needs to clarify it. There's no Windows Central that needs to clarify it. It's a friggin' exclusive for over a year. For about a year. Yep. Why? Because yep. Sony said it right there and then. A, yep. an exclusive right here. There well, was no J- Todd Howard <laughs> jerking yep. off. There was no meetings. Yep. There was no $7 billion waiting for the ink to dry. All they had to do, Sony got those exclusives. They're clear, concise, and they said it's an exclusive. And they didn't have to spend $7 billion to do it. So exactly. that's the thing. Jay, and I always make this argument, is that my, why is it that Microsoft has to buy these studios, give them all computers, ground up, new laptops, all this other stuff, uh, 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 put post on LinkedIn that people jerk off to, uh, all this stuff to get a fucking game out the door, exclusivity hopefully, to an Xbox player, when Sony could just go tap them on the show then go, who's this? For spoken, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Exclusive Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. They didn't yeah. have to buy Square Enix. They didn't have to wait for fucking uh, uh, Jim Ryan, uh, Gordon Ramsay come out there with the friggin' Beef Wellington and and sell it. Dude, they didn't have to do any of that shit. But they got games and content for their players. So why is Microsoft different? Why are they like this startup company where they got to buy these studios, start from... Like, how the hell is Compulsion Games not have a game out? They made that Happy Few trash and released in 2018, and we're in 2021 don't know what the hell they're doing. How the hell is Hellblade 2 not right here, right now? Hellblade 1 came out in 2017. When Microsoft yep. bought them in 20, uh, 2016, I think. And Microsoft bought them and, fr- and and they made the game on the Switch in 2018. Yep. Where's Hellblade that, 2? Yeah. Well, let's face it. Uh, shout out to David Jaffe, man. He said Microsoft, um, they, you know... You shouldn't have to spend seven billion dollars to get something going. Exactly. He said, if it was him, right? And he said, what Microsoft lacks is good management. Management of exactly. the IP. That's what I mean. It's a bigger problem than just getting games out. Yeah. And yeah. that's where Jay they, they don't. It's, it's agree. quality. Like the, it's yeah. Just, it's quality games. Because here's the thing, right? If you think about it, the deals that Sony does, a lot of those deals are good quality games right they they, they make small they, moves they know what they it's what very wants. rare that they invest a shitload of money into some duds now don't get me wrong sony make plenty of duds right yeah um, the predator and, wasn't and, and, really and, a high hit that was a partnership yeah. but, but 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 let's face it right um those games didn't cost much money yeah. and it was more filler than anything yeah uh, but the month the, the games that they get behind that they see value in they spend a lot of money for them um, mm. and, and those games tend to do very, very well. Yeah. Like, so, I mean. It's just that the, the amount of effort, and I, I can't believe that this is solely based on market share. And, you know, I saw somebody, Kevin Crunch said, 89, 20 box sales for Resident Evil. Holy shit. Yeah. That on, on PlayStation versus Xbox. Yeah. yeah that, that's the problem. That's why Game Pass yeah. exists, because they are not getting that ratio. And you even saw Ubisoft's numbers the week before. Like, yeah. they're making bank off of PlayStation, like, of you know, PlayStation. 40%. Yeah. And then you look at Xbox, and it's like 30%. And it's like, uh. Well, just just look at yeah. Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite. Yeah, 40, 40, 40, 40, almost 50% of Fortnite. Is on is on is uh, comes you know the revenue comes from PlayStation exactly so that means you know hey why would you spend your money on that's why those emails like on, that Phil Soft yeah. and uh and you know and and, and yeah. um, PlayStation's like how am I getting paid and that's yeah. the thing but like I can't think that it's just mindshare that how Sony 
could get these exclusives and just bring content because I don't I think Microsoft could do that. I just think they don't want to do that because they have a different they're playing a different game. Yeah. And because they and that's where people need to call this shit out. Don't sit there with a straight face and be like, "Oh, it's just Phil trying to to you know, grow the studio and stuff." No. Straighten the eyes. They could bring you these games if they wanted to. They just don't no. want to because either to just... their subscriber numbers in Game Pass are not where they want to be or they don't really care to bring you those games because you're buying the shit anyway. And that's, they feel like they're just going to keep reselling you the same consoles, the same old games, play better, and yeah. you're just going to eat that up. And the fact is, is that you're waiting, and guess what happens? All of a sudden, 2018 turns into 2019, turns into 2020, turns into 2021. You get yeah. emails in 2017 saying, I signed some games that I'm not showing here in the two to three years they'll be out. And now we're in 2021. Like, these are years, everybody. And guess what? Sony's not missing a beat. And you thought the PlayStation 5 was going to... That Microsoft was just going to inherit the 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 flip that you see every generation. And it didn't happen. That's the other thing, Jay. I think a lot of people were hoping on faith that the PlayStation 5 would, would just like... Uh, Sony arrogance would flop. And Microsoft would come to the, the rescue just like how the PlayStation 3 play, 360 era was. Yeah. And you're right. it didn't happen because you want to know why Sony learned and moved on. And I remember on last week's show I played how to how to lose a brand and how Sony failed early on at that PlayStation 3. And what they did was they brought games to their audience. They even survived the friggin the hack. Yeah. And brought yep. that back and did Absolutely. PlayStation Online even better with the PlayStation 4. They learned and moved better. That's why there was that huge uproar. Now, again, I was 360. I was Xbox One until the 2016, until I was like, enough is enough. I'm not paying $500 for an X that's going to do the same shit that this one's doing. And I started playing Sony exclusives, and I looked at my Xbox and said, I waited all these years, and I've never played anything like what I just played right now. Yep, and I don't think they're ever gonna do it. I'm not confident, and eventually I just moved everything off the PlayStation because I knew that Microsoft was not going to deliver that kind of experience that I had. And then I just started buying my multiplats on PlayStation because, and then the VR came out, and that was another Phil Ness move. Like it just after a while, it's just like, what are you waiting for? And yeah. they needed to bring these games to this consoles, and exclusives matter. So all these years, they're hearing exclusives yes, don't matter. They do. They matter, and you could see how Starfield and you know people like even Tim Dog like trolling around talking about exclusives. Now I don't think Tim was one of the ones that saying exclusives don't matter. Uh, maybe he was well, during that era, but you know he's 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 trying to rub it into everybody's face because guess what? Finally, the Xbox fans have Give exclusive, a, a, a confirmed exclusive, not by Microsoft though, not yet. And shout out to over eighty people watching. Hit that like button. As we wind this shit down, the grindhouse, man. Thank you to J-Dubs for coming out here, man. We're just kind of just venting on this stuff because, you know, this is the stuff that I know. Jay, I listen to him on all the other podcasts. He's on Zaire's podcast and every podcast he goes on to. We're not wrong because guess what? If what we say comes true, Xbox does better. Yes. And that's the thing. And we're not here just going... Ha ha, we got this. You can't play. Ha ha, we're going to take our ball and run away. Like some bullshit like that. This is legit concerns, especially from from myself, who I wouldn't talk this many, this much time if I didn't feel something for Xbox. Because we wouldn't speak this long on this stuff if this shit wasn't grinding gears. Because this, uh, my biggest thing is they used to do this and they stopped and people are accepting that they stopped and talking about bullshit. Yep. How can you hype up features and f quick resume and shit? What the fuck are you quick resuming? Exactly. Well, you said games are not coming for your console. First party games for 2023. What the fuck are you quick resuming? Watch me quick resume Perfect Dark 360 version and watch me quick resume to, to Sunset Overdrive, which you'll never get a sequel to. Like, I don't understand. And, and again, people might love playing the old games and that's fine. Play the old games and shit like that. But you cannot sit there and, and say that everything is fine and Microsoft got it on the control because there's a lot of shit just like this stuff. Like, you should not be depending on a media person to confirm your game exclusive. And 
not even comment. I'm looking on Twitter. They never, they, they, they said he reached out to PR. My, why is Microsoft not saying it's true? And that's, uh, Jay, I don't know, this is my speculation. I think that's what that Jeff Grubb article is. I think it's a bait. Yeah. I think it's like a bait for Microsoft just to be like, yep, yes, it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's I true. believe this so strongly. My insiders told me. And the fact that Microsoft won't come out and just commit this, it's spo- like, what are you waiting uh, for? Even if it is, like, right? Just like, do it. Who cares? Who cares? Is, is your platform, uh, you really just trying to confirm it to your base because nobody exactly. else cares. It doesn't matter. You don't even right. need to show the game. All you need to do is say, yep, it's a, only on PC and Xbox. Thank you. More to come in June. You should do that in yeah. March. End of story. Now, Starfield is there. The The longer you ho- don't confirm it, the the, yeah. the the people are going to talk. And, and no Jeff Grubb article and stuff is going to do that because it's going to change that. You yeah. got to say it yourself. And speculation's still going to go, no matter how definitive a media person is, because there is no confirmation from Microsoft that it is exclusive. <laughs> and not saying that it's not, but why don't you just say it? What What's the deal? So, you know, but exclusives do matter. I'm eager to see what Starfield looks like. Uh, if it does come out, I'm going to buy it on Steam, just like I did with Master Chief Collection. Because, uh, you know, the, and, and that's the other thing. Starfield, the people that want to play it are going to buy it. The people that are not sure about it, or this is not their type of game, will just play it in the subscription. How do you get the people that will buy it to turn into those Absolutely. other people? Absolutely. How? Because Microsoft wants you to try, and Microsoft just wants you to subscribe to these games. And if, if all these, these 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 industry people are saying like it's all about Game Pass growth, well then the only way to ensure that the people who want to play the game subscribe is by putting that game only in Game Pass. Game Pass, yep. So, so that's why I question, what is it really about? Like, what is my, Microsoft wants that cake and eat it too? But you're not. Game Pass is not going to grow the way you want it if you don't do those kind of moves. Yeah. So, uh, but I think though the problem is, and, and I'll just say it and shut up. I just think Microsoft went too long with telling people that exclusives was anti-consumer and it's not what they wanted to be. <laughs> to now they actually have some studios, right? And now they actually have an incentive to have studios. Now they have to unbrainwash these people. Yeah. Without looking like hypocrites that they are, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's it just like VR, where VR, yeah. I will have bring high fidelity VR. They even had Todd Howard. Yep. Out there. Say yep. it. Oh, we're bringing oh full God. on VR. Yep. Oh, my God. We're going to get it. Yeah. And then he goes, ah, we're not ready. No, nobody really yeah. wants it. And then you look, the interest for VR actually is just as almost 2% lower than interest for developing for an Xbox. Yeah. Like uh, I thought, you said people don't want it. So what does that say about your Xbox then? At the game, at the uh, the uh, what is it? The the um developer conference. Yeah. Like it, it, the thing is, is that they're the okay. They you're right. They have they just like they sold the message on the power. Like and then yeah. you're looking at all these turnarounds and people are talking about, oh, uh, you know, where's this power that's being shown? And meanwhile, you look at Ratchet and Clank and everybody's like, that's next gen. That yeah. is next generation. And meanwhile, if you looked at last year at the same time, all you would have heard is how Sony is being outdone by the twelve teraflops of power and and you know the guy with yeah. the big long beard and you know him like whisk rubbing it you know as you're playing with yeah. magnets and shit. And you know talking about this power, you would think that Xbox would just be clean. The Jason sweeping. Ronald guy. Yeah, Jason Ronald with yeah. the big long ass yeah. beard. You know, just doing that stuff, like, like tweaking it and just being like, you know, it's about the power. And you hyped up this power. And now when these games are coming out, Sony is demonstrating this power and the purpose and the SSD. Like, you know, what's funny is that the SSD they made fun of. But you look at what Returnal does with the SSD, with the procedurally generated maps. And then you're yeah. looking at what the what the rifts do with their load times. And when you look at a next-gen game and you see the significance of the load times, I'm not talking about no backwards compatibility plus bullshit like Mass yeah. Effect. I'm talking about a real next-gen game, a Series X version and a PlayStation 5 version. The, the loading times are better, but it's not even the loading times. There's actually game mechanisms being utilized by the SSD. Yes. And they even talked about how it renders the stuff in front of it, but yeah. you know, as soon as you turn around, it renders the stuff behind you. Like, they're, they're Ratchet and Clank is the ultimate... Um is the ultimate manifestation of that. 
Yes, exactly. So, so with that, with that being said, nobody can sit here now and say that, oh, this can be done on Xbox or that can be done that because mm-hmm. guess what, you're not getting that game on Xbox. No, and if that game, and just like how the. Uh, Remember that resin that uh that UE five demo and they're like yeah. this can only be done on the PlayStation and people are like no this is UE five no, it, it can, can be run. done yeah but what they're yeah. saying is that if it can run on an Xbox it just would run differently because yes. they're utilizing things with the read and writing of the SSD that's what Absolutely. they meant and that's where people just didn't grasp that they're like oh this could run on Xbox yeah it could but it's gonna be different and either whether you see it or on their development end. Yeah. It's going to be different for them because of that. That's why when they said this is due to the SSD, they develop it specifically with that SSD, which is another reason why this whole Xbox is PC and PC is Xbox is sucks because Sony devs could focus on, on that fixed hardware. They don't have to worry about all those variations. And you get things like Ratchet & Clank. You get things like Returnal. Because those games are maximizing the potential of fixed hardware, which is the whole reason why console development is, exists. Yep. That's why we benefit as console owners, because they are. we know that the people making games are focusing, they have a fixed set of hardware that they could use that feature set for. Yep. And that's that, and, and you know that's the benefit of the console gamers, and that's the advantage they have over PC. So, you know, I'm not saying PC is bad or anything like that, but PC has a lot of variations, and there's... There's contingencies that are put into these games for scalability and things like that, where they could take advantage of that on a console. That's why it kind of sucks that every Xbox game is a cross plat is a multi platform game, basically PC and console. Like, yeah, I wish yeah. they would just make a console game. Anyway, by the way, how's Flight Simulator? What the fuck's that? That's Where's true. Crossfire X well, campaign? Jeez, I forgot about that. That was supposed, to- and that's not in Game Pass, Jay. Yeah, you get to pay for that. So, Game Pass oh, crew, man. you're going to be in your... Your panties are going to be in a bunch. Oh, That's not man. Game Pass game. Crossfire X is a campaign you're going to have to pay for. Uh, sure. Flight Simulator, how's that coming? Are they still waiting for those 12 Teraflops and the tools? They're going to fly them in with the plane? Dude, where are these games? This was all last year's shit. Oh, Pandemic. All right, tell it the Ratchet. Tell it the Returnal. Where are the games? Where are they? And, and, and But meanwhile, go on Twitter and they'll tell you... Oh, they're making this fucking James Bond game with five dudes from from some bullshit studio. And the initiative is spun off into three groups of four. And they're working on Bond, the sequel. They're working on all these games. Worry about the shit that didn't come out yet. That was supposed to come out two years ago. Yep. Don't worry about five games that they're working on in in, in 2030. They got to get the shit out now and let it be successful. So, you know, anyway, it's it's, like... (laughs) It is. I tell you, you go on and on with it. It just it comes down to the goddamn games, and that's what grinds my gears. Is that all this shit is about? All they all this talk about Microsoft, and they just cannot get their games out the door, and they need to get in front of their goddamn news. And Big time. Big I don't. Time. And this whole like like I said, hype up a service. What about the content? But anyway, Jay, thank you so much for coming on. We had an epic show. Uh, time, brother. Yeah, awesome. I know I've been trying to get you on. You've been busy the last couple of weeks, but I really appreciate you coming on and, you know, grinding your gears at the Game of Grind man. House. Thank, but, yeah, tell everybody advice. where they can find you, Jay. I know. Plug your new Twitter account because those sons of bitches got you. Yeah, y'all know at least once a year, man, they get me. <laughs> they get um, you. you can find me at The Real J-Dub 2. You know what I'm saying? The it's real. okay. They, that's they a better one anyway. Show. Yeah, that's, that's, that's anyway. even better. That's even you know, better, the real one. Yeah, you know, they, 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 they got me canceled on, you know, one day, the next day I had, you know, the same day, actually, Jeez. I had 2,500 of my subs back. But it's okay. We're going to nah, build man. back up, you know. It's real deal, good. man. You're real. That, that, that's the thing. Like, you could get that back because you, when you just talk honestly and just talk how you feel and, and have, and also, too, have fun with it. Like, that's the other thing, too. Like, you know, Twitter, Absolutely. you just have fun and shit like that. But Absolutely. the thing is, is really, like, it, it does come down to just gaming and having, and, you know, playing, having a good time. And, and when you look at what the competition is doing, like you want that competition. You want, like I said, if we, are, like, I'm not going to come on here if Microsoft releases Halo's incredible 90 Metacritic. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm going to be like, 
Awesome. That's what needed to happen. I'm going to go That's play it. Go happen. get it. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. nobody's going to come here and say, oh, I'm collecting tears. And there's no tears. Tears of joy because thank God they finally done something. Holy yeah. shit. You yeah. know? It's Anyway. But, Jay, thank you so much. You know, follow Jay Dubs over on his new Twitter account, The Real Jay Dubs, on, on, on Twitter. And I thank you for him for coming into the grindhouse. And, guys, I want to thank you again, guys and girls. Hit that like button. We have two dislikes. I don't know if those are PC guys. Uh, or Xbox guys, who knows? But anyway, let's count to those by having more likes. Uh, you know, let's get to those 80 likes or whatever like that. But I want to thank everybody for coming in for an awesome gaming grind house. We hit the 800 sub mark. This is incredible. And, uh, you know, just follow me over on the Twitters and follow me over here on this channel. Subscribe. We'll be streaming some games. I got a lot of stuff coming up. And, uh, you know, like I said, like, you know, I have all that, uh, that tech stuff, I do. I have a lot of texture too. I get to start talking about. But uh, no, J Dub does not have a yellow chair, Ryan. But shout out to <laughs> yeah. yellow chair. No, those yellow chairs, man. I tell you. Yeah, that's for a special special bunch, man. That's you know special. That's a special bunch there. Yeah, that's I'm, a special bunch. Hey, of yellow chairs. I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna just tell you about the bangers and keep it moving. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You know. It's all about the games, man. It's the games, man. It's all about the game, and that's the thing that frustrates the most. Like, it's about the games, but it's like you see the stuff getting hyped and pushed to by, by Microsoft, yeah. and it's like, what the hell, the game, man? This is great. This is nice. Boost is nice, but like, I'm boosting old ass games. Like, where's the new stuff? Like, like I exactly. said, I just listed a bunch of them. People are talking about five games are gonna make 2030, but meanwhile, yeah. games are supposed to release last year, announced two years ago. Nobody's yeah. talking about them. But they're worried yep. about Starfield being exclusive, which we haven't seen anything about it yet. Anyway, yep. we talked enough about that shit. But we will see. Maybe Microsoft confirms in the next day or so, and then this is over. But until then, hey, I'll wait to hear it from the Phil Ness's mouth. Anyway, guys, this is Jez7780. What grinds my gears? Hit that like button. Share it out. I will be putting timestamps in here because we love the timestamps. And thank you again for an awesome show and for your support. And Good night, everybody. See you guys later.